This episode of Nintendo Pod Block is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our Fennial podcast, head over to patreon.com slash bossrushmedia or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Alrighty, welcome to Nintendo Pop Block here on Bosch Rush Games. I'm your host, the Enlightened Sider Eddie B. Joining me is the one, the only, my bestie, boss man himself, Mr. Corey Diderick. Hello, good sir. Hello, I'm here. I'm ready to do Nintendo things. And I have yes. to give a big yes to our oh, guest. Oh, yeah. A big one. Big yes. Yes! I'm so <laughs> He's the host of Scramble Rambles. Just someone I love talking to and engaging with. We talk about food, hip hop, uh, gangs, and more. Everybody, please well the doc himself, Mr. Austin Campbell. Hello, good sir. Hey, what is up? It is it is good to be here. The best Nintendo show on the planet. And I'm not oh, even saying thank that. You so much. It's like it is. It is the best. To be fair, a lot of Nintendo shows have gone downhill over the years, so we just we, we don't consistent. even talk about them. We don't talk about those, you know. <laughs> we don't talk about the other Nintendo shows. I don't even know. I don't. I don't listen to any other Nintendo. I don't listen to any Nintendo podcasts anymore. I just don't. Mm-mm. I started listening to some of them. Uh, I got to get back into the Nintendo past and listen to theirs. And no, the Ed, Nintendo you're on the only one. You're on the only one. This is one. the only There's Nintendo a- podcast you need to care about. Yeah. I do care about yeah. this. I love Nintendo Pop Block. <laughs> no, not you. I meant the oh. audience. <laughs> oh. You better care. It's your job. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yes. Uh, so, uh, if not, we're in trouble. Uh, I was listening to our Wii U uh, discussion, Corey. And I, was, and, I just, and I was just like, man. Every time I hear this, I, I, every time I was listening to that discussion, I'm like, we talked about PlayStation <laughs> so much on that episode. That by the time we got to the games on the Wii U, we were just like, oh, we got like 25 minutes for game talk. <laughs> but, that yeah, but it's but so good, everybody. The Wii U is great. Everybody should buy a Wii U. <laughs> to be fair, isn't every Pow Block episode technically a Wii U discussion? Isn't it? Isn't it always kind of brought up in a way? Yeah, because all the best Wii U games are on Switch. So Switch. yeah, <laughs> you're just missing some. So, uh, yeah. but Austin, how have you been? How have you? Uh, what you've been up to and everything? Let the people know. Well, I. Me and Katie went to Oklahoma City this weekend, so we just got back today and uh, just living it up. I went and saw Anthony Jeselnik, which is a comedian, if if anyone Mm. knows. uh, We went and saw him live. It was very, very cool. He's Um, so funny. Because it it wasn't in like a theater. It was a very small club, so I was literally Mm -hmm. not even like maybe 20 feet away from him, like very, very close. So uh, not a bad seat in the house. It was a great show. All new material, stuff he's never done uh, on recordings and everything. So it was very, very good. Can't wait for other people to watch it now when a special comes out. So, um, Oh, he's doing, uh, <clears throat> he was doing the re- live recording for that one? Well, not he wasn't doing the live recording there, but that has, that has the material he's working on right now isn't stuff that uh, has been recorded. So... Unless okay. you've been to the show, you probably have not heard any of the material. So it's uh, okay. it was pretty good. It was a really good show, uh, and his openers, his openers were also great. So it was a, it was a really good show overall. Ate a lot of food, a whole lot of food, you know. <laughs> and so went, as you went do, to, went to went to the mall a little bit, you know, just kind of chilled. Went to an aquarium. It was great. It's good time. So, you guys had I'll talk about the food vacation. later. Yeah, yeah. And I had the next two days off, so of course I had to come on Pow Block today. You know? Yeah. Since I don't have to wake up at the butt crack of dawn, before the butt crack of dawn. So. <laughs> uh, what about you, Corey? How has your weekend gone? 
busy. I've been uh, cleaning out my game stuff and my old, I don't know, what do you call it? A lot of like just stuff. You know, every year I go through a purging of things Mm -hmm. and this is another big one. So I've been, I have PAX media badges and David and Stephanie are also going and I've I wasn't gonna go. Then I was like, I should go. Then I was like, I I don't I don't need to go. And I was like, man, this is really expensive to go. And then I got a bunch of emails inviting us to go see games and stuff. I'm like, should probably go. This is yeah. Should probably go. Then I started pricing it out. And while I was pricing it out, I was getting stuff ready to sell to kind of like, I mean, not that we don't have the money because we do, but we're also trying to buy a house. And so mm-hmm. that money should probably go there instead of a, oh, I don't know, fifteen hundred to two thousand trip dollar trip to Boston to you know yeah. go to PAX and it's like, man, once you, I mean, once you price out flights and hotel stays and food and I don't know a shirt or two or you know whatever, like it's expensive yeah. and plus calling off work and I don't know, it's becoming a bigger hassle than. I anticipated, so I don't know. I I want to go, and I'm trying to go, but we'll see. It's it's still a TBD, but Stephanie and David will be there. So, but I'm still getting rid of some stuff because if I do go to PAX, that's where the money's going. If I don't go to PAX, it's going to some other cool things, and you know, well, you know, gotta gotta update the the room that nobody can see because I'm always sitting in the dark because it's always a mess. <laughs> I hear you on that. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, for me, I had two days off and not just really That's not true. Relax. That's not true. We ended expansion pass the other night early because you got called into work. Do not lie. <laughs> I, I'm, say, I'm, Do not lie. Saturday, I'm talking about Saturday and Sunday. I had two days off, mm-hmm. Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Friday night. Did you answer your phone once during those two days? Well, no. They, they didn't he call answered Friday. the phone during expansion pass, and I had to mute him. <laughs> so I had, but I had, to, I had to do it because it dealt with the money for the store. It dealt with the same, <clears throat> and so I had to get make sure that's right uh, and everything. Because if I don't, uh, there's going to be some a lot of people in trouble, me included, even though I don't touch the money. So I. Had to go and fix the safe. We got it fixed. And we're good to go. But Friday, it was Saturday and Sunday. I was off, relaxing, getting some things done, playing a certain game that I think I'm three fourths done. But we will go when we get to play the If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. But everybody, um, I guess it's time for Snatchendo! And Austin, as our guest, what have you been snacking on? Man, I ate way too much this weekend. <laughs> I um, first went to a pizza place that uh, Katie's brother and, and uh, what is that, sister-in-law told us about. Uh, we didn't get pizza. We got sandwiches instead. Uh, don't couldn't tell you why, but I got a, a nice French dip sandwich, and it was very good, very delicious. Uh, loved every mm. bite of it. Uh, How was probably the one. Of, oh, well. By the time I soak the thing in the ajou sauce, I I don't uh, I let it sit in there for a long time before I take a bite. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. You gotta you, that thing better be dripping. You better have. Uh, you know, beef juice all over you by the time you're done. If you if you don't use your napkin in a beef drip sandwich at least ten thousand times, you're not eating it right. You'd be having that. So I, I always 
I always feel like I need like two or three cups with that. Yeah. Because it's well, just, they gave it me a like... big old deal of it. A big old okay, deal of it. That's the brand. Okay. That's <clears throat> what I need because when I dip it, I, I want that yeah. the juices to soak up in that bread before I buy this. Mm hmm. I when you understand. when you go to Arby's, when you go to Arby's, it's like I need two of these. You need to give me two of these because it's not enough. It's not enough juice. Exactly. I need. Um, we went there. And it was very very good. Then I had a little trouble. Now I'm not gonna go into full details on the TMI situation, but let's just say I've been refraining from spicy food here lately. It's been causing problems. All right. We go to the comedy club and I order. A bacon chicken wrap. How old are you now? I'm only 27, but it's only been a problem oh, lately. It's only been a oh, problem no. lately. It's, it's, yeah, it's too it, early. It, if you were 30, I, I would be like, oh, that's what it, it starts. A, is it a team rocket situation? Let's say it was kind of painful to sit down at certain times. I was like, what in the world is going on? It, it, it was not great. So, you know without going into too much details i order a bacon chicken wrap at the at the comedy club and it's dark in there i got my blue moon I'm, you know i'm drinking and I, I take a bite into this wrap it is not bacon chicken ranch it is jalapenos and <gasps> black and chicken and it's like really spicy and i was like okay they got my order wrong but i am I don't even know if I'm a millennial or a Gen X, or whatever. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to eat it. I don't care if I hate it. I'm just going to eat it. I'm going to deal with it. And let me tell you, I'll never do that again because I felt it for the next uh, probably 18 hours. It was bad. <sighs> bad news. It was good. It was a good, good rap. I like it. I like spicy food, but this was like too much. It caused me troubles. So that was a little bit of an issue. But the next day, went to a breakfast place that we had been before and let me tell you it is the best it's called neighborhood jam they've got <clears throat> it is delicious we waited so we we put in reservation online and it was going to be like a 3 hour wait and, ah! and we we went to bookstores we went and got coffee and then we just waited we just ran around downtown basically until that uh, that wait was done because it is worth it it is it's worth that uh it's worth that weight. Is the place big or kind of like medium size? Um, it's kinda just medium size, maybe like a like a s just like a regular downtown building. Maybe okay. I don't know how many people they fit in there, but it was packed from open to close from like six to two thirty. And so we got in wow. about we got in our reservation about twelve thirty. And I got some lemon poppy seed pancakes very very good very mm. good and this giant breakfast burrito which i know Corey appreciates a burrito this breakfast burrito is the best breakfast burrito i've ever had we had it the last time we went and this time we knew we were getting it we knew we had to get it so it's and a, it was good was again. It a, was it a fatty fat or just like a oh, small kind of burrito fat we so me and katie we get we got the burrito, we got the pancakes, and we split it between the two of us. And I ate definitely most of it, but it's a big burrito. It's a big, <laughs> big burrito. <laughs> I love it. It's very good. If you like black beans, there's like really good black beans, very flavorful black beans in there. Ooh, it's good stuff. Nice. Good. It's good stuff. Nice. Um, I enjoy a good then, black bean on a on a chipotle, like a chipotle burrito. Oh yeah, yeah. I go back yeah. and forth. I kind of like, but the black beans is 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 like mostly what i go to mm -hmm. um and then we uh we got some Krispy Kreme donuts we try to get the reese's uh the reese's flavored ones that they have now mm -hmm. uh but they were all gone so we just got some regular Krispy Kreme donuts and then we went to uh if you know country it's toby keith's bar and grill uh, it's actually where my wife used to work so katie used to work there um and a different one they shut down all the locations except the one in oklahoma city so we go there when we went when we go down there and i got a steak good potato nice. they got these little um it's called a tumbleweed and it's just really stringy onion strings fried with little jalapeno spears in there 
jalapeno straws. It's very, very good. Ooh. Very, very good. Like uh, and now I'm good for like, I'm good for a month now. This is, <laughs> it was so much food, but it was worth it. It was worth all of it. So, um, that was, and if I missed anything, I just plain forgot because it, we, we ate so much food. It's crazy. It's great. That's good. Awesome. So, Corey, nice. what have you missed snacking on? Oh boy. Um, well, yesterday we went to Chipotle because the week before they kind of really screwed up our order. It was like cold and gross. And mm. so they sent me like this survey, you know, like those generic surveys and I filled it out and I was kind of like, I wasn't like a, like a jerk about it, but I was also like, well, you know, it kind of wasn't good this time. And, uh, and so they sent they sent us a coupon for buy uh, buy one get one free on entrees, and then yesterday, yesterday we got a um well maybe not yesterday two days ago we got a email that said hey we've added two t- a ten dollar credit to your account and I was like mm-hmm. oh okay so we basically paid like five bucks for two Chipotle meals and chips and it was awesome it was really good yeah, you this can't time. Pass that up. You oh nice yeah so that was kind of like our <clears throat> big snack of the week i'm trying to like do less snacking because i had a mm-hmm. big conversation with my wife this this weekend about how fat i am so we're long short of it i was like i should probably not be as fat as i am so. i feel you i'm i'm the same huh? way i've been I... the same way with my wife here lately like I really would like to live a little bit longer in my life. I need to like yeah. not be so fat. Be cool. I, yeah. I call it untrained muscle. <laughs> untrained. Well, I got too much untrained muscle. I need some more trained muscle. <laughs> yeah. Also, Ed, your stomach is like a terrifying iron skillet of just, I don't know. I don't even know what, how do you, I don't, I don't understand how your body works. I, so. I, I don't get it. I don't understand, but it's fine. Everybody's different, and that's okay. Get <laughs> <laughs> the rainbow sing along with that. <laughs> it was Daniel Tiger, dude. Come on. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Daniel. Tiger. Have some kids and figure, find the joys of Daniel Tiger. <laughs> uh, work at Toys R Us and I, and, and have to put the Daniel Tiger DVDs mm. alphabetically. And we count mm. them and mm. do it for inventory. Trust me. Mm. I, I know. Do you watch them though? That's the pro- that's the question. Um no, mm. I do not. No. That's what I thought, Ed. No. No. <laughs> no. I remember little when little I worked at Target. <laughs> I worked at Target and little kids would be like, What is, where is Shopkins? I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I worked in the toy department. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> but those I things would sell out those. immediately they would yeah. sell out immediately and so by the time you i see them it's like oh they're gone dude hatchable yeah. shopkins those were those are big ones when i was in the toilet bar they're gone <laughs> shopkins were uh it was shopkins <clears throat> there was that furby kind of looking thing it was, it was like, the hatchable the one that came out of the, the hatchable yeah yeah the Hashimo, you talk about a midnight release, a, re- a midnight release where people <laughs> standing out at six o'clock in the morning yeah. to get a Nintendo yeah. Switch. Mm. Yeah, it was 2016, I think, when I think Hatchimos had just got pop became popular because it was the hot Christmas item, and mm. we, we. People came at Saturday night because the sale for them for the new Hashimoto's was going to happen at seven at uh, ten o'clock on uh, that Sunday. They came to our job at seven o'clock at night, parked their car. Oh yeah, they were ready. They were ready. They parked their car. <laughs> they were stay- ready. <laughs> they stayed there overnight in our parking lot. Because, you know, they would work getting the truck stuff off and, you know, working everything. And they was making sure that all the stuff for the sale was going to be ready for the Hatchimals. They, I think around, I want to say around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, 
Them folks got out their car and started lighting up. We didn't open for up for the next three hours. It's cold outside. They all stood there hmm. to get a hatchable. Sounds like my experience with a Wii. So we'd stood in line for like eight hours. <laughs> the Wii, the Wii was. I didn't live through that. I, I my mom and dad tried to get us a Wii every time, and it was, it took them like two or three years before they finally got a hold of one. Uh, well, Corey, the only time I did like a, a video game live thing was when I was with you to get the Super Nintendo Mini. That was it. I've never waited in line for anything else. Like, uh, yeah, we did do that together, didn't we? Yes. I saw, I saw that picture recently. But yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, good times. Hopefully, we, hopefully we could relive nope. not relieve that, relive that memory. I <laughs> when I bought the either the Nintendo Mini or the Super Nintendo Mini, I was actually scheduled to work that day, but I was late for work and so i didn't clock in until like five or ten minutes after i was supposed to clock in and all my bosses knew exactly why they're like we don't care we don't care <laughs> you, you, you can find to work and that was it <laughs> yeah it's just like you came to work and that's good enough yeah <laughs> they're like we're oh. it, it, you just won't get paid for those 10 minutes I'm like i don't care <laughs> i work through break anyway it's fine <laughs> Well, for me, I uh, had some uh, spicy salmon sushi. Uh, mm. Had a banana milkshake yesterday with my checkers. A vanilla milkshake. Uh, uh, I, I haven't had it in a long time, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, I'm going to get me one of these. Um, truly enjoyed that. Um, had some chicken lo mein uh, and fried rice. And the weird mm. thing about the, the chicken lo mein that I had they changed the noodles for the lo mein, and I just don't like that. I just don't like it. Isn't lo mein? Uh, isn't that the noodles? the The texture of the noodles are different than what oh. they used to make. Oh. Yeah, these are kind of like, I guess, like egg yolk kind of noodles or something, oh. or like what the noodles that they used to have was kind of like a spaghetti string almost, but it's something else. And these are they look like big ramen noodles but they so sticky and they're thinking like this this does not oh. taste good so I may mm. have to figure something out on what I'm going to do when I order from them because their fried rice is still my big so I might just start ordering like a large thing of fried rice and eating it because I just don't like the mm. lo mein the noodles mm. and stuff um oh. and then some have some of uh Target's gummy bears um, and I did taste the Pepsi, <laughs> the oh, Peeps no. Pepsi. Nope. I did taste it. <clears throat> Pass. Um, it does taste do like that, it. It does taste <coughs> like Peeps. I will say no, it no. does taste. I mean, it does taste it like, like Peeps. poops. Um, that makes it worse for me. <laughs> it um, tastes like Peeps. I don't like marshmallow. I mean, you you know what? You really can't taste the marshmallow taste. It has mostly. It's mostly like you're smelling the peep and tasting that sugary yellow skin. Mm. Oh, it's the a, sadness. It kind, of t- it, it. it kind of tastes like that. You should just the call di- it the sadness. <laughs> yep, the disappointment that oh. it's not any other candy whatsoever. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Corey, uh, if I put a peep and a, and a Reese's peanut butter cup in front of you, which one are you taking? You have to. I choose one. death. You can't choose death either. That's that's part of the rules. <laughs> no, I don't know. Probably, 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 well, probably a peanut butter cup because at least you I, get chocolate. As much as I don't like peanut butter mixed with things, I do. I don't hate hate peanut butter like by itself. Mm-hmm. As opposed to Peeps, you, that texture and the nasty marshmallow, <laughs> fake marshmallow garbage inside, and just, I don't know. Ah. And now they're putting it in beverages? No. Mm-mm. Pass. Mm. So, I'll take a peep over uh, black licorice. I'll take that. I'll take a peep over that. So I don't know if it. I would. It's about I, it. I, I would. Both, they're both bad, but I don't know if I would. Yeah. No, I could, I could get through a peep. <laughs> I hate black licorice. Black licorice is bad. How is that racist? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I'm just being stupid. 
Oh, I had fine. I had some uh, great grandparents that I would barely saw maybe once every five years, and all the candy they had was black licorice. And I was like, no wonder we don't see you more often. <laughs> well, black, well, <laughs> well, that is true licorice. The the Twister stuff is artificial because uh, that's not considered as licorice. But and that's what I like artificial. Don't give me that natural stuff. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I had some Ben and Jerry's. Vanilla caramel fudge um, ice cream. Gosh, Ed, how are you still alive? I just got a little snack. That's I worry all. about you. I mean, yeah, I do worry because I got a 12 pack of Grenade's donuts too. They were a dollar ninety nine. Did you cream too? No. They were they are dollar ninety nine. No. Mm. For a dozen? For a dozen. Dang. Yeah, the grocery stores. I think they just did a special sale for them because they was just like, we made uh, overabundance. I'm like, yeah, I put this on sale for three ninety nine, and then put a dollar coupon off for it. So it's just like, y- y'all not slick. We know what y'all doing. Oh, was it like the was it the Target ones or is it the? No, it was it was a grocery store one. It's a grocery store. Oh, uh, because I was gonna say we had donuts at Target and no one really liked them, but we would slap on a two dollar off coupon to get rid of them and they'd be like a mm-hmm. dollar for eight donuts and people would eventually buy those just to get rid of them. Yeah. And then they'd be mad and be like, why don't you order more of these? Cause no one buys them. <laughs> no one buys All them. Right. It's fair. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you, I was going to plan on going to, uh, this place called Mitsuwa's. Um, they do sushi and ramen there. And it's like a Japanese, uh, store and everything. Um, but I was just like, no, nah, I just want to stay at home. I don't feel like driving because I've been like driving all week, and I'm just like, uh, I just want to stay home, <laughs> not and just rest. Yeah. Um, Staying home when you're older is the best. Yeah. I staying home. Places. Staying home is not overrated. It's like perfectly rated as a thing yeah. to do. That, that, I mean, I like to go out too. I, I do like to well, go out, but I think it's like the I like when I go out to places. It's somewhere that I haven't been to for a long time. Well, you know, you know, because I would like to go to Gallup and go some go so like play on arcades or, um, hopefully when the summer when the summer hits, want to go to Six Flags and do the roller courses and stuff, mm. you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, roller coaster is about that. <laughs> to quote, to quote the great movie, the 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 masterpiece that is Good Burger. Uh, yeah. When asked why would you go home, she says, "That's where my stuff is, and that's mm. where I live by that." Yes, I live by that. That's a great, great movie. I've never great seen movie. it. I... What? That what? Mm. Ed, That's okay. Know. There's probably <laughs> Corey. There's a ton of movies that you have not seen. I know, but it's Good well. Burger, man. <clears throat> I didn't like it. I don't. I didn't like. You just said you've never seen it. How do you know you don't like it? Because you they, like Kenan and Kel. Good Burger is based off the Nickelodeon show of Kenan and Kel. So what? Yeah, they they weren't funny to me. Kenan Thompson is funny now, but like that show was not funny mm. for it to me. Did you like all that, or was that also a pass for you? Pass. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of the Nickelodeon shows that I passed on, besides like shows like Ren and Stimpy and Roundhouse and Doug and um, the so one like all the with... Nickelodeon shows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Kenny Kim was on. Was I know? I'm just Nickelodeon. Kidding. I'm just giving you a hard time because it's fun. More a fan of the cartoon. So cartoon Nickelodeon shows. Uh, yeah. Rin, it's okay. Kenan and Kel was... end up getting done. Drake and Josh is better than Kenan and Kel. I'll, I'll die on that hill. Uh, one of them is in uh, How I Met Your Father. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Josh. So, yeah. 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 I don't know. Didn't one of them go to jail or something? Um, He definitely was on his way. I don't know if he actually went to jail or not. I don't know the story. I just knew one of them was like a screw up, but I don't remember which one. So yeah, he yeah. was uh he was uh texting females of a younger age, 
think that was yeah. like that was a thing. You'd be surprised how many like Nickelodeon a... uh, actors are also in that same boat. <laughs> a lot of them. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. what happens. Just, but mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, wow. well, everybody, we're gonna get into play with power. Corey, what have you Yay. been playing with power? Yeah. Oh boy, what have I been playing, Ed? Let me tell you, I've been playing a lot of <clears throat> Destiny Two, Shocker, Disney Dream. Hold on, Valley. before you. Hold on, because why at why at one o'clock or two o'clock your time? <laughs> I see your name coming, Corey HD Dream Valley, <laughs> Disney Dream Valley. Also, oh yeah, just... because it's my. So last night I was up late going through all my stuff and. So I actually I eliminated two bins of stuff, so that's cool. But uh, yeah, I was a little bit tired, and so but I, right before I go to bed, I play like a half hour to forty five minutes of Disney Dream Light Valley, and mm. sometimes sometimes more. Um, <laughs> mm. But yeah, I've been playing that. I'm trying to, so I'm at the point where. I'm progressing into the new season of Disney Dreamlight Valley, but I haven't finished the old season stuff, uh, which I, I don't know if they call them seasons in that game, but like when they mm-hmm. like the stuff that they add in updates, right? Like they're on their third major update right now, and I'm making my way through the second update uh, that they did. I just call them seasons because that's what Destiny calls their stuff. So in my mind, it makes more sense. Uh, so I am doing a quest for Scar. Scar's requested extra fizzy root beer for some reason, because that's uh something that lions drink, you know. Uh, I've also opened Remy's restaurant, and I'm working to uh get him some to stock his shelves full of fresh vegetables and oregano. Mm. So I did that. Um, and I am trying to, uh, make Kristoff remember that he loves Anna. So that's my, that's my, those are my three major quest lines right now. You're like a real, you're just like a real genie. Do you play as the genie from Aladdin? Is that how the game works? No, but there is a rumor that Aladdin is going to be in the fall update and that the genie is going to be part of the game. And I'm very excited. Let me tell you though. I am all, I am now an official cadet of the Space Ranger Corps because I got but I finished Buzz Lightyear's quest line. Um by the way, the Space Ranger headquarters is in a rusted out RV down by the beach. <laughs> so you know. So not because... like Star Command where it was a giant ship in space. It, no. Star Command's not canon anymore unfortunately, I guess. Right. Yeah. I'm also working on the like overall quest line of get it, get um, 10 characters on the island to be your best friends, which means level them up to level 10. And I'm at six of them. So uh, also Scrooge is raising the price on everything and I'm not happy about it, but it's because I've been neglecting the like he he's he's like he's the Tom Nook of this world. Of right. Of so. Course. Um, if you don't help him out, like help upgrade his store, he uh, kind of starts raising the prices, it seems. Um, so I instead of upgrading his store, I've really been upgrading. Like I now have the biggest backpack because I'm trying to game the system. I'm trying to min max, you know, mm-hmm. I'm I am at level three of five on my house. I'm trying to build my house. Uh because once I build my house, I'm moving my house down to like the one of the other areas in the game because it's better for like farming and stuff. Um, by the way, pro tip: the fastest way to make money in that game is to uh, unlock two of the biomes and go get peppers and tomatoes and sugar cane and then sell it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> pro tip. <clears throat> Carrots, carrots are the fastest growing things, though. So you could buy carrots mm-hmm. and just have them sit for like ten minutes and then go sell them all. But you know, what else have I been playing? I think that's about it. Oh, I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy, also. 
That game's great. Hogwarts Legacy is awesome. Are you, are you trying to catch up on Destiny 2? Like the new when is the new expansion out? Isn't it? Well, soon? I'm not trying I'm not trying to catch up. I'm trying to um store my bounties so that when the new expansion <laughs> comes out, I can un- like do a fast unlock on some of the artifacts. Um mm. it's called bounty hoarding. Uh so that's what I've been doing. It's mostly I've I haven't been doing the bigger the bigger XP bounties though because uh um I just don't have the time. I've just been doing like the uh, weapon telemetry bounties, which are the easiest ones, and it'll probably level me up three or four levels on on the <coughs> on the season pass and on the uh, the artifact pass. I guess is what they're calling it now. I don't know. They're changing they're changing everything with Lightfall, and um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what I've been doing there. So. Hmm. But yeah. I got I got to get into Dreamlight Valley. I really do. Dude, it's I mean, look. I hate Animal Crossing, but I'm so my play it keeps track of your playtime. Oh, awesome. The best thing also about this game mm-hmm. is it has cloud saves and cross progression. Uh... So, when when I'm laying, when I'm getting ready to go to bed, like I'll lay on the couch or lay in lay in bed and play my the Switch version. But if I'm if I'm in my office and I really want to play on the TV, I just turn on my Xbox and I'll play it on the Xbox. Now that might sell me more actually because <laughs> I I I I like Animal Crossing, but I'm like I just don't care about like anything that's really going on here. But Disney, yeah. Disney will get me involved. I was I was just watching Aladdin before we got on here, so <laughs> like I've, I'm 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 a hundred percent down for the Disney version of this. This is close to what I wanted. Which was a Thrillville Disney World game. This is this is in the step of the right direction here. I know, dude. If they would just give me Roller Coaster, Roller Coaster Tycoon, but with Disney theming, oh, you would lose oh, me forever. Man, man, I'm just I, saying. Corey, I would love it. I'm like Corey's time to do five block. <laughs> oh, like, well, I don't have. I have. I don't know what's going on in the last six months in the world of Nintendo because I've been building a theme park. So get out. <laughs> <laughs> Although Planet Coaster has some on PC has some pretty decent Disney mods for it, mm. but mm. Planet Coaster is like it's really complicated and like has it's a very it, technical. I I don't yeah, I have the time to learn all the things with Planet Coaster. I want mm. like I want Roller Coaster Tycoon one and two remastered is what I want. You know, honestly, honestly, all these great the remasters coming out. Where's my Roller Coaster Tycoon remastered? You know, come on, Frontier. Mm. Two of your devs yeah. follow me, okay? Come on, where? Yeah, give me, give us those <laughs> HD textures in that roller coaster tycoon. You know, you know what? They don't even have to be HD. You know what? I don't, I don't need to see the people's faces. I just want to make sure <laughs> my roller coaster is going in the right direction. Just port it. Okay. Just, just port it. Don't even remaster. Just, it. Don't just yes. port it. I just want a free park where I could just build as many roller coasters that I want. Yeah. Yeah, you just go into free play mode. But didn't have well, it in one or two. No, but get out of the it. game. Just go into the first <laughs> the first level or the fifth level and do all the objectives and do it right and run your business and you'll have a free play. Basically just mm-hmm. once That's you have like six for. billion dollars, just demolish the entire park like I do and just <laughs> start over. <laughs> just start over. <laughs> no, that no, I, I do that in three. Just make roller coasters. Just Enjoy it. Man. So, Roller Coaster Tycoon. That game. That was a fun option opinion, too. It was. Also, Switch version. Not good. Yeah. And I'm saying Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and Adventures. Like, what's with the controls? Like They're terrible. Yeah. The controls are bad. <laughs> okay. I have it. Because I was like, I was excited to you know play it on Switch, and I'm just like, oh, the controls are bad. Nah, mm-hmm. no. It's but, bad. Um, but uh, Austin, what have you been playing with Power? I haven't been playing too much in the last few weeks because uh, we went on a trip, and then I was working on Katie's truck for a while. That was a project, so mm-hmm. been kind of really busy with work, but. I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy mostly, but I'm kind of slowing down on it. I'm getting to the point where it's like, 
I'm getting close to the end of the story, I feel, but I'm also doing the the Ubisoft side stuff that I'm getting kind of bored. And you, we all know how that is with open world games. So I'm kind of in that range where I'm like, do mm. I want to keep going? Do I want to try to get the set up for a platinum or do I just want to finish this game out and be done? Um, but I did get the PSVR 2 in. I downloaded some demos to play. Uh, <clears throat> I've the It's way better as far as like <laughs> the setup. The setup was so incredibly easy compared to the first one by like a mile it was it was amazing how you just had to connect the connect one thing and be done um the the only issue is and i think i mean it's really with me is my eyesight has gotten worse so when i oh, play no. without my glasses i like i can't see nothing <laughs> i'm it's like all blurry i'm like oh no i might and i you can wear it with your glasses but i feel like it's going to scratch the lens. So I'm kind of in like this weird, like, uh, it's going to mess it up. Yeah. It's going to, but I played, um, I played some demos. I did the RD eight demo, just kind of getting you used to the controls and stuff. And it was really, really cool. Um, the way you pull out your guns, the way you like store your, 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 your supplements, your health and all that stuff. Uh, I played the NFL pro era game. Uh, very difficult. It was kind of difficult. Um, it it feels weird because you actually kind of have to like get your body into the motion of it. You have like shotgun formation where you'll stand back and you'll just hike the ball. But if you get right up in there, you got to put your hands down there and get it ready to hike. It's like it's like makes you do it. And then you look left and right. You're trying to figure out like, oh man, like is he going to be open? Oh no, he's not open. So you look around and then eventually. I haven't got the throwing down, so like the throwing as soon as I'm like, oh, I got someone open, I like throw it and it goes like four feet and just falls. I'm like, oh my god! So like, it's taking some use to get. I'm I want to try to get it down in the demo before I actually get the game. Um, I do plan on buying uh, Call of the Mountain, but man, something to me buying. Uh, Buying VR for sixty bucks, the games for sixty dollars. It's just like, man, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. After I just dropped, yeah, I'm, so, I'm surprised you didn't get the bundle. <laughs> um, I don't remember why I didn't. To be quite honest, I don't remember why I didn't. Because playing Horizon um, in VR would probably be weird. Because that game is so masterful. I, d- yeah. By the way, side tangent <laughs> yeah. about Horizon Forbidden West, the best PlayStation game, mm. in my opinion. Horizon is PlayStation's best IP. But I didn't play the VR, so. Well, I can't say that. I'll let you have that. I'll let you. I'll let... <laughs> I know that's sirens that... on my end. <laughs> I mean, I know that's like an unpopular opinion, but. No, that's they... my opinion. And I'm sticking with it. I don't think it's a totally unpopular opinion, but I'm also like. I'm a weird PlayStation fan. I really just like the PlayStation box. Like I've been on there my whole life, but as far as like PlayStation exclusives go, I'm not the biggest like fan. Like I'm really not the biggest fan of PlayStation exclusive games. Like I'm, I'm really not a huge fan of any first party exclusive games. Weirdly enough. Like it's always been for me. It's just weird. I don't know what it is, but, uh, but I do like horizon. I just like the first one more weirdly enough and if they like remastered it i wouldn't be totally hating on it because i like it (laughs) i would like to jump back into it but man that game's so good oh the first one's so good it's my one and only platinum but uh it's a good platinum too horizon yeah 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 man ala so so cool yeah i I think as soon as that game was announced i bought the the deluxe i have the statue back here like i yeah. I was like, I don't care what this I is. Was, Aloy is so cool. I'm in. I, I was care. mad at that game. Of course I was, you were. When they first announced it. Did yeah, you want them to make Killzone up... 6? <laughs> were no, you mad that they were just, making Killzone 6? No, it was just, <laughs> I mean, it just, there was just something about it that just, like, the, I think it was the premise of it that just upset me. I was just like, this don't make no logical sense. And I'm like, and. Of course not. I, That's why it's a video game. <laughs> I mean, not in that, but I'm talking about how 
the trailer goes to like to give get people into it. I was just like, well, that don't make no sense. How would that? Is it always happens with Sony games when they have their story that there's a lot of uh, nonsense, logical nonsense. Ed, that Ed, you were on a Nintendo Power Block. You were on a Nintendo podcast. Uh, a company that was based on a man who jumps on turtles. What do you mean? But, <laughs> right. but but it's but that's more of a gameplay thing. That's not more so of a is, story so thing. Is, so is shooting robot dinosaurs with bows and arrows. <laughs> yeah, it's a game. It's just a game. It was just it was just a trailer that I said that first trailer, but I ended Boy. up getting the game and I do I do love Horizon uh uh the the Horizon the first one. Um, Should we because, tell them how the second one ends? <laughs> no, because I'm still playing the second one and I gotta get through that. Oh man. Well get ready uh, for a third one. That's all I'll all I'll, I'll say is get ready for oh, the third I, one. So I, excited. Know, <laughs> I know it's gonna be a, uh, I know there's gonna be a third game. I'm just oh, hating that Halo just like I gotta be the only one to get here. I'm like, okay, we know this. You said it for the last six hours of playing this game. <laughs> Come on, Gorilla Games. I'm like, you're uh, doing the uncharted stuff. Stop this nonsense. We get the point. We get the picture. She don't want nobody to help her because she feels like she's yeah. the only one can do it. Okay, good. Can I continue with the rest of this game and not this terrible dialogue? Well, don't worry. It. You're going to get that because they're making a multiplayer game that's exactly that. <laughs> oh, good. Google, Google, Google. Um, um, but you didn't get it. Uh, yeah, I I will get it, though, because I do want to play in that world. I want to see it in VR. I did play the... Uh, I also played the Star Wars, um, like I forget what's called. Edge one? Yeah, Galaxy's Edge, where, where you're at like the bar, but you actually go out and shoot and mm-hmm. do missions and stuff. Like you're a bounty hunter type deal. Yeah, Tales that from, one was kind of cool. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's so many games. The problem is, is I've never played a VR game that I was like, yeah, this was probably worth sixty bucks. And I don't know if I'm going to be getting that with Call of the Mountain, even though a lot of people say it is. And I'm not saying that a game shouldn't or should be 60 bucks, so but to me, trying ask, to save money, I don't know. So can <laughs> I ask you, Austin, <clears throat> have <throat> you heard a lot of talk about PSVR 2 just in the PlayStation no. community? <laughs> no. No, not at all. I, I <laughs> Now, I haven't really looked in. I think uh, Jack, I think Jack Brewer got one. I think uh, I think multiple people in Bosphorus may have gotten one, but I haven't been looking to see the discourse online, um, and I've not seen anything about like games wise what people are playing. Like, I wanna I mm-hmm. wanna play like uh, there's a game called What the Bat, which is a sequel for What the Golf, which was a mm-hmm. great game. What the Golf mm-hmm. was a great game, and I wanna play What the Bat, but I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't seen anything about it. Um, I haven't seen anything about Call of the Mountain other than like what was on like IGN or GameSpot or whatever. So it's because okay, it's really weird. No one's really talking about it at all, which is honestly not surprising because. And sorry to cut you off, Ben, but Sony Look. has done a terrible job of just like promoting their their side stuff, like the VR, the Vita. Like it's like we're kind of over it. Like and let you got to commit. You got to commit. You got to give us more than. Uh, you got to give us more than one Horizon game to get us excited because RE8 is technically not done. It's just a demo. GT7 is technically not done. Beat Saber is not carried over. It They're still working on the PSVR 2 version. Like There's a lot of games that were kind of like, oh yeah, it'll be there day one, but they're not really. They're It's kind of like well, getting, still being about it. made. <clears throat> that was the thing about it. Then they had say there was like the twenty to sixty some games that they were planning for for PS VR two. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, but I don't most of them that. are ports. <laughs> ports or or okay. like technically, like RE eight like specifically says that we are still in the process of making this, so it's not ready. Which yeah. was kind of like not my assumption, and maybe I just missed that. I thought it was going to be ready when it came out. It's yeah, not really. I kind of thought it was going to be ready too. I think the only <laughs> like the only big games that are ready are are Gran Turismo Seven and Horizon, right? Yeah, like and, and that, then like Res Infinite and Horizon. Tetris Effect and all this stuff. But which I can't wait to play Tetris Effect. That's another. Oh one my that gosh! I didn't get to Dude, play Tetris in VR. Effect in VR would probably be amazing. Um, 
Oh. But like that's available on like MetaQuest and stuff, right? Like Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um the humanity game, the one the people who made Res Infinite and uh Tetris Effect, they made that humanity yes. game. They showed that the at the very boring state of play. Uh oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, humanity they Destiny was, 2 on there. trailer, so that I was think. the best. <laughs> I think that was the best. That and Baldur's Gate three was like I I was kind of watching it with Josh, uh, Josh Finney from you know, yeah. China Casuals. Um, we were watching it together, and <laughs> after that, it was like, and then the Suicide Squad stuff came on. I was like, oh no, that's it, that's yeah. it. Now we gotta watch fifteen minutes of Suicide Squad. No, oh my gosh, dude, no. Suicide Squad does not do a <laughs> single thing for me. Well, th- this is and the I'm thing so about this. Uh, uh, before I get to what I've been playing, the thing about the state of play is because I gave it like a C. I'm like I thought it was okay. Um, I I don't feel like it's their worst ever, but I'm like I understood the I understood the VR stuff. You know, I thought there would yeah. be some indies uh and some third party. I thought there was going to be some bigger first party stuff too, um right. from Sony for for PlayStation Five at least, uh, game wise. And it just really felt weird because I'm just like, okay, you guys didn't try to get a last trailer for Final Fantasy. You didn't introduce Spider-Man. Um, some of your uh, in studio companies, like, what are they working on? Like, I thought yeah. before your eyes coming to uh, PSVR 2, that's great because that's like our now, next talk to walk game. Um, which, by the way... Grayson- Okay. Great. Okay, that is the game that Grayson was talking about, maybe like a year ago, if I remember. Yes, yeah. but it was on PC. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was that was the most interesting VR game to me out of the five yeah, they showed. That that pretty much was like <coughs> the highlight of it, and it was just yeah. like, I don't know. I I when I when that state of play ended, I asked people, I'm like, did you enjoy the state of play? What were everybody thinking? And I heard crickets. Like, yeah. like dead silence, and I tried to even watch reactions, and they were just like, "It wasn't the one for them." Like, they feel like Sony mm-hmm. dropped the ball on this one. But, yeah. give, but I mean, Corey had this discussion. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna say it's mostly if you're a Capcom fan, yeah. Which I like. I I enjoyed seeing Street Fire and Resident Evil Four, but I've also kind of already seen this. I'm yeah. I'm ready to play those games, not see any more about it. I think. I actually think Street Fighter Six looks awesome, but I don't. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think every fighting game looks awesome, and then I play it, and I'm like, oh, well, I still suck at fighting yeah. games. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah. Tekken Eight. I told Corey, I think Tekken Eight looks better than Street Fighter Six. I know they're different graphics and stuff, but I think Tekken Eight got more flash than Street Fighter Six. Mm. I mean, Cammy looks really good. Don't get me wrong, I love her character design and her move set. Is like, she wearing really a Union good. Jack jacket? I don't, probably. It was cool. I mean, I, it was cool in the trailer. I just thought, you know. Yeah. So I. Yeah, I didn't think the state of play was that bad, but I really feel like that Nintendo Direct, like I told Corey, I feel like that Nintendo Direct put it at a high bar. And, you know, we got the developers direct for Microsoft and everything, which was good for their first. Um, but it just really felt like to a lot of people that Sony dropped the ball on this one. Like they should have ended more with uh, Spider Man or something because I don't know that Suicide Squad game. As most like, people were just like, uh, I'll try. It. Like I'll pick it up to see what it's more about. But they were interested to the story. I really felt like this is just Lost Planet, but more playable. Lost Planet mixed with Guardians of the Galaxy, I would say. They really that might need to be on the PS Plus. That'd be a great PS Plus game for people to put on day one and just because I don't see anyone excited about it. Like I don't know a single I didn't see a single person online say they're kind of looking forward to it or gonna give it a shot. I'm a huge Rocksteady fan. I've been looking forward to this forever since Arkham Knight and. I think, I'm like, I think the I big thing care. I think the big thing that people are really scared of is like they saw that term battle pass in that leak screenshot. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. now everybody thinks it's like a 
a service game, which I mean, we don't know if it is or not, but also it was like, it was like really interesting to see them like really push hard that it's a sequel to Arkham Knight in that, which they haven't seemed to do yet, you know, like confirm that it's in the same universe, but they just confirmed that it was a sequel and it's in that universe. And that was interesting. I wonder if they said that because nobody's interested. (laughs) Like you know, I mean, because it, it, it's it's just like you're. I, I think people are gonna get bored on how repetitive it is to just moving around, jumping in the air, shooting. Like well, yeah, the game is vertical, but most of the trailer, everybody's just like, you mean I'm not going to be able to make an attack? There's not going to be no driving sequence. Like if it's just me holding the right trigger, uh, and just hitting a purple target or something. If I got to do that for about 20 some hours, I'm going to get bored of it. Like, if they don't change it up. And then they were talking about the gear stuff, and they were just, people were just like unimpressed yeah. by that. Yeah. I also, I also think like the Avengers left a lot of bad taste in people's mouths, like a mm-hmm. big yeah. bad taste in people's mouths. That another multiplayer superhero game is not something people want right now. <laughs> no. So. And it's just, it's just totally different from what, arkham was like the melee combat detective work puzzles like it was like a metroidvania on steroids but yes now this is 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 just a third person shooter and could be anthem slash avengers slash like just like ah all right well this this is not the batman games we got and would have been that Ninja Turtle game, man, that was that was rumored that they might be making, like that would have been way cooler. That you could have had your melee that, combat there. You could have, the turtles ah. fit way easier in this universe than they, yeah, like in this gameplay style and this type of game than the Suicide Squad. Yeah, you know, like if you want jetpacks and stuff, Donatello, give Donatello a jetpack. Who cares, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. Also, I would. I'm just a sucker for everything Ninja Turtles, and if they put Ninja Turtles in everything, I would get it. But that's just me. Ninja Turtle Dreamlight Valley. Make it oh my gosh! Don't tease me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I like I said, I didn't think that. I, if I had to rank them, like put them at the top, I think the Nintendo Direct is high. The developer separate from Microsoft is middle, and. Uh, the state of play was like last to me because I think uh, the the two biggest drop Metroid Prime Remaster and Hi Fi Rush really made up for anything of people felt bored by the show or that those individual shows. Those two games really got people hyped and people who played them really thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, yeah so, you know, man, <laughs> I really uh. I really, I, not that I want games to fail. I just hope that they really figure this out because, like, Guardians of the Galaxy has been the best superhero game, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, I think, I think so. Maybe people are just superheroed out at this point. You know, I mean, clearly the movies are I'm, even showing that now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I man, I man. watched I finally watched Wakanda Forever last night, and it was like it was good, but I'm like, I mean. I I could wait like six months before I see another superhero movie, right? Like I just don't care. Um, and I uh, that's somebody this point, who like really Disney enjoys Plus exclusives at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, they pushed all their Disney Plus shows. Did you see that? They originally had six shows planned yeah, for this year, yeah, and now they have it's... two. So. Oh, wow! It's just, yeah, Bob Iger's cutting, <laughs> chopping the chopping the trees down. You know, he's just like good. I mean, he needs to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I get it at first, right? You're starting a streaming service. You want you want to like have content there, but like at some point, you gotta like rein it in a little bit. And by the way, you're Disney. Your content already is gonna get people on. Like, I know. You may not grow anytime soon, but like you're gonna keep people on just with the movies. The, I know the they made a yeah. National Treasure spinoff. <laughs> and awesome. And, and, By the way, Austin. and yet they couldn't pay uh, uh, Emilio Estevez. Why couldn't y'all pay Mighty Emilio Ducks. Estevez come back? Why couldn't I you know. make him come back? Did you watch the new season? No, without Emilio Estevez, I kind of was like, well, I know. I was like, I kind of want to, but this kind of feels like a Mighty Ducks three situation. Although 
when we did the review for Mighty Ducks, that true. three was actually pretty good. <laughs> three was but, great. Maybe maybe we need to do maybe we, Corey. Mean you should watch season two. We should do a podcast about it. Let yeah, you know we'll we make need, a state so, of play for the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, we uh. So I've I've really wanted to bring Standard Def back as part of Boss Rush Presents instead of its own thing, like a once a month thing. Mm-hmm. We should mm-hmm. do, we should do either Mighty Ducks or we should do National Treasure. Mmm, mmm. Where's the heavyweights series? Yeah, Where's we gotta do heavyweights series? also. Heavyweights also, and and meet the parents, the entire trilogy. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh man, meet the fuckers. <sighs> my parents, my parents <laughs> would let me watch that movie. They were like, they're like, beat them. They let me watch Meet the Parents, but they got really weird when it was called Meet the Flockers. I was like, it was in the first movie. What are you talking about? It's the same joke. They just put it in the title this time. All right. Uh, well, uh, for my uh, play with Power, just going to get it out the way. Um, playing Metro Prime Remastered. Uh, I think I'm three fourths done with the game. Uh, just got to do one more area and then do a little side quest stuff. And collect some, some things and then I'll be done. Um, I did pick up Grim Guardians, uh, Demon Perch. This is the Metroidvania kind of game where you play two demon hunters. Uh, one has a gun and the other has like uh, magic for melee attack. Um, it's not bad, it's, it's fine. It's, you know, it's anti creates, uh, so it's not bad. Um, uh, picked up my Octopath Traveler, um, but haven't started mm-hmm. it yet and stuff. Um, and then got the special case that I ordered from uh, Best Buy, the steel case for it. Nice. I thought you said special K for a second, like the cereal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like, going uh, uh, but I did finish one of the uh, main characters. Um, the he like a he's a guy who's into magic and um his wife was his wife and daughter was killed by his assistant and then mm-hmm. that's where the story starts off and they be, you know they put you in jail for like a, a long time um and the first part is like you have to break out it's all in the demo um so that one will carry over to when I uh, start the game and then I'll probably start a new character um, to choose to see their storylines. But it's really, really good. I'm loving the voice acting, loving the music. Really, really great of a game um, from what I played of the demo. So I can't wait to, um, to start the official game. Um, but that's pretty much it for playing with power for me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Well, so everybody, me. it's time for... Femi News! Corey, take it away. Oh no, I gotta open the dock. Here it is, I found it. We're good. We're good. I added a story, Ed. Okay. Because I thought this was gonna be our lead story, and it was not on the dock, and I had already made the thumbnail, so I added it. Okay. Are you ready for the new Pokemon anime? Are you ready for the new main character, Ed, that is not Ash Ketchum? Who could it be? Well, Catch the new assets. protagonists are Liko and Roy, but there's also another protagonist, Captain Pikachu. Yes! So there's another <laughs> Pikachu that wears a captain's hat, like a boat captain's oh, hat. Oh, like a sailor? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, we're giving you, this is a tweet from the Pokemon from uh, the Pokemon Twitter account. We're giving you a first look at two new characters from the upcoming all new Pokemon animated series, introducing Freed and his partner Pokemon, Captain Pikachu, will accompany our protagonists during their adventures. Stay tuned, trainers, for more info will be coming soon. I'm assuming this is the Pokemon Presents that's coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, no, so the Pokemon Presents. Uh, by the time you guys see this episode, it already went live. Is it? I don't Mon- know what it's yeah, at. It's, it's starting this Monday. Look, when you when you put Pokemon somewhere, I just you lost me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I love Pokemon, but like 
Pokemon stopped for me after like gold and silver. So like that era of Pokemon is like, yeah, nice. Everything after that's like, ooh. When they announce the Pokemon Game Boy Advance games, I will be all over that. The Look, Ruby if they announce Sapphire, Fire, Red, and Leaf Green, I will be yeah. like... Mm. Hold on, you didn't, you didn't play uh, yeah. Diamond and Pearl on Switch, uh, Austin? No, I I kept hearing mixed things, and I I I'm, I really have like Emerald is my the, the remake Emerald was my game. Yeah, the remake. Okay. Yeah, I kept hearing That's mixed things are. about the remake, and but the Emerald was like I want the originals. Like I like the original. I'm just I tried uh, Shield, and I tried like I just I can't get into the new Pokemon. I really just like the old. <laughs> I like the old 2D versions of Pokemon. I don't know if I'll ever get into the 3D stuff. See, you know, I was okay. loved. I would love a good 3D Pokemon game. And Scarlet and Violet were very promising, and then they weren't good, yeah. apparently. And Except they yeah. sold, like, 20 million units, so what do I know? But And that's why they'll never change, unfortunately. I know. Like, that's, that's like, the... I'm like, man, I just... Just give I me know. the 2D Pokemon. Or, I mean, or, or a good 3D Pokemon. I just... Every time I get started, like, I started Shield, and I wanted to start Violet, and I'm just like, I get, I get really bored. I just can't. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I know. I don't know. It's just not the same. But that's me. It's a personal problem. It's a yeah. personal problem I have. Clearly, people have other opinions about Pokemon that are different from ours. Yeah. Which is fine. Now, I'm a little disappointed that Captain Pikachu is not a pirate captain. I would be way cooler. I like, yeah. like a Pikachu with a with a eye patch. It'd be pretty mm. dope. Well, the thing with Pikachu is this like sailor uniforms. He's always been like that, like a captain or a sailor. So something kind of like positive and heroic. He has and everything. Uh, yeah, Jack Sparrow's they've never, positive heroic. They Nintendo's never did like a pirate thing for their Pokemon or with Pikachu. I know. I'm so, still waiting on my pirate themed Fire Emblem that they didn't promise us that we made up <laughs> because it was a rumor all that time yeah. ago. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyways, I hate Pikachu. That. I guys. hate when you make up rumors that don't come true. I know. That's, a, that's, a, that's the worst. I'm the well, I'm came the Nintendo at... fan of the the. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, we'll move on to our next story because <laughs> Ed's staring at me like he's bored. <clears throat> uh it's official, guys. Shocker, Nintendo will not be at E3 this year. The official statement uh, came and said, we approach our involvement in any event on a case-by-case basis and are always considering various ways to engage with our fans. Since this year's E3 didn't fit into our plans, we have made the decision to not participate. However, we have been and continue to be a strong supporter of the ESA and E3, which means if E3 blows up this year, they want a spot next year. <laughs> um, what could this mean for any Nintendo announcements for the summer? My prediction is, short and sweet, they will have a Nintendo Direct either the week of or the week before, and they will still do their Treehouse stuff in Seattle, and we will still get the E-T- E3-style Nintendo presentation that we all expect, mm-hmm. but it mm-hmm. will just officially not be part of E3. Like or the day kind of... it could be part of Jeff Keighley's summer of gaming. No, also thought of that. not. Why? I don't you know. Like they sound real supportive. They uh, sound real that, supportive. Of the that his say. summer, ga- mm-hmm. his summer like... game fest is a nightmare. It's just a mess. And I understand, you know, he wasn't trying to be shady online about this. He's like, that's not, that's not E3 go. But I'm just like Jeff Kitty, your show's not no bit no 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 better. Well, at least at least his show happened in the last three, five years. <laughs> Unlike E three who like can't just can't get yeah. people to show up. Yeah, it happened, but shoot. <laughs> everything that he got was uninteresting. That's really? not I mean, entirely it- true. I would say if Jeff Keighley could just like take the summer games fest and trunk it down to three days, like, you know, E3 does, it would be be great. It was was too spread out. It should have spread out. We need like a big moment of hype and then just put it, put it out. I I used to, 
I mean, to be fair, I think we all wanted everything to be spread out at one point because we thought the three day compact thing was like ah too much information. But now it's like, no, they were right. Maybe for journalists, keep it that way. not for you. I think the journalists were probably like IGA were like, yeah, we need a break. Like, don't spread us all this news all at once. You know, the boss rush team is probably having trouble <laughs> keeping up and all that. But, you know, I mean, oh it's spread out. It's like, eh, eh, sounds fun. You're not everybody watched all the stuff like. People were wondering what were the times and days for the summer game fest and everything. Um, we don't know. We don't know because it was just like when it was happening. Everybody was like, okay, what shows next at what time? And like, it was just a it was a messy mess. Hmm. So, um, for me, I'm going to miss Nintendo being at E3. I do agree with you, Corey, uh, that they'll have their direct in Treehouse. I wonder if they're going to do one day for Treehouse or all all three days, three or four days. Mm, I mean, I've, it's probably going to be like it's probably going to be like one day, right? Like the mm-hmm. the direct will be in the morning, right, or probably like at noon, probably, and then uh, the Treehouse stuff will be like the after in the afternoon, right? I mean, that's kind of. Mm-hmm what i think right it also depends on what they have to show i mean if they don't have much to show then maybe they don't show anything right i mean mm. that's also a very big possibility that i, I mean, mean that that's the big rumors right they don't have a lot for this fall and so i'm expecting a lot of remasters or ports or like smaller b-tier games that maybe they don't need to show up mm. for e3 because you... like do What's you think awesome? that uh, I know a lot of people don't like hearing this over and over again, but do you think they want to have their own event specifically because there's a new console version coming out? Maybe not a new no, console, really. but like a new version of the console coming out. No, no, not really. I, I think they I, th- I don't think we're getting a new switch. I think whatever's next is what's next at this yeah. point. Mm. Um, I mean, I mean, because I mean, we're got... heading into our s- what year seven, right? I mean, yeah, you're six, you're seven, you're six, six. Yeah. Mm. I mean, we, I mean, of course, we're breathing about Tears of the Kingdom being released. Um, July, their biggest game is gonna be Pikmin 4, you know. So, and then we mm. still got uh, Xenoblade Chronicles DLC, we still got Fire Emblem DLC, uh, and uh, um, Mario Kart DLC. Mario Kart DLC, yeah. Splatoon 3 DLC. So we got content coming from Nintendo, but I think they were just like, okay, we we need to plan on how we're going to do this. Definitely with Ben and Chaos, uh, Kato's, uh, one and two coming out. Like the stuff that they show in that February direct, some of that stuff can continue over until um, there are summer showcases. Because still, like the new Professor Lady game. We haven't seen no gameplay. Like they could be promoting a lot of level five stuff. Um, Capcom might have something in the gear. Um, if if Microsoft and Xbox are working on something, because uh, we talked about that for a special pass, I, we probably could see some of their stuff show up on Switch. Like, like of course, like Minecraft Legends and Minecraft Dungeon <laughs> stuff. But they probably got some other things that's gonna be on Switch uh, coming from Microsoft. Mm-hmm. That we don't know about yet, uh, or something that Nintendo's putting in. Um, mm-hmm. We may get a, a release date for the Blu ray or 4K or DVD for Super Mario Brothers movie in July or, and stuff for mm-hmm. the next direct. Like, I think they're, I think they want to plan, plan it out and showcase what is coming for the end of the year because if Nintendo really don't have a lot of I won't say triple A games, but like their B team and partner games coming out, they want to make sure that it's strong enough to be able to handle uh, the rest of the year. Because right now, Nintendo could fall back. I, I talked about this on uh, Special Pass. Nintendo could fall back for a bit until they until they're ready. Because at this point in time, Microsoft and Xbox need uh, not Microsoft and Xbox, Xbox and PlayStation need all the attention they could get this holiday season. With all the mm-hmm. games that Xbox been delaying and they got in the pipeline, they need to get stuff out to get Series X uh, continue to roll out a bit more. 
PlayStation, it's been three years. You guys got a lot of great games on the system, but you need a bigger library first party wise on that console. Well, they have Spider Man. Been... I mean, Spider Man's going to sell 20 million units. So, it, I mean... yeah. It, it, yeah, I can understand that, but I'm just like, I, I feel like you need more than that, than just Spider Man at this time. I you think know, because I also think I not to cut you off, Ed, but I also oh, no. think like Nintendo, I think I think with the success of Metroid Prime Remastered, I think they're going to rely on those ports of two and three that are coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're coming at this point. I don't believe that they're not coming. Uh, yeah. a, you could have those a Pokemon game, which we know is coming. Right. I mean, <laughs> Pokemon comes every every year. So uh you position those games as a uh, as kind of your one two punch for the fall, and then maybe some B tier game like a Mario, a new Mario Party, or you know something along those lines. I think you could survive the fall and winter with that lineup. You know, I don't know. I I don't. I I think with Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, like I don't think you need a lot in the fall Mm -hmm. because you've already released your kind of two big games this year already. Right. So that's my opinion. Uh, I think they could survive off of remasters and B tier games and Pokemon. And be totally fine. And I think Nintendo's going to be focusing on level five. I think since they're coming back to the West and most of their games probably going to be on switch uh, for this time being, I think Nintendo wants to get that that ball rolling. Uh, we still don't know what Bandai Neko or Kobe Tecmo what partnership they got with Nintendo. Like if they're developing any games and stuff with them. Um, Mercury Steam. We don't know. Maybe their mm. rumor of a new 2D Metroid. Maybe that does show up. And then they got the Game Boy and Game Boy Events and stuff. So we could yeah. be getting like six for six they, systems. We could probably be getting like at least 14 to 18 games announced. Yeah, the I mean system, they the have service. They're going to provide content without providing new games, right? I mean, I think that might be their strategy after Pikmin. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I oh. I think I think Nintendo's in a fine position. Plus, you're going to get a, all that third party stuff that comes out every year in the fall. And like you yeah. said, like that new Professor Layton will probably come out this year. Bat and Kados is probably a pr- going to be a pretty big push for them, right? From the makers of Xenoblade Chronicles, right? You could just slap that on there. See where it all began for them on Nintendo or whatever. <clears throat> Don't tell and, people it's a card game because we saw that <laughs> Midnight Suns didn't do well because they positioned it as a card game. Yeah. And, you know, shoot, they probably... I have a, literally have a feeling when they end at Nintendo Direct, they already secure Shovel Knight 2 to show off. Well, no, I, I don't think Shovel Knight 2 is coming anytime soon. I mean, based like, on what just, I'm... I've heard and what I know, like, it's just because, well, they got to put Mina out, right? I mean, that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah. Yacht Club has to put Mina out, and, you know, Mina, they'll probably work on for either DLC or whatever. Plus, they have their publishing arm. Like, I would love to see, mm. don't get me wrong, I would love to see Shovel Knight 2, and I'm going to tell. Yacht Club's marketing director when I t- when we talked to her on the podcast uh, in a couple weeks uh, on the Boss Rush podcast uh, I'm going to be like look look I appreciate what you guys are doing okay appreciate it I really do the publishing the spinoffs right where's Super Shovel Knight one of the very first things <laughs> you guys tweeted out was that yeah. you were going to go through the generations Shovel Knight Super Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight 64. Where where is my Super Shovel Knight? And don't tell me it was Shovel Knight Dig. Okay. Don't no, tell me it was it doesn't that. Count. Doesn't no. count. Beautiful game, doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Shovel Knight. That's okay. I'm just kidding. I I am actually very 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 excited for Mina. I think Mina looks awesome. Yeah, I think uh, Mina's going to sell very well. Um in our I hope so. Oh. Yeah, I, I hope I just, so, especially because Sho- Shovel Knight uh, Pocket Dungeon and Shovel Knight Dig didn't sell very well, which is shocking yeah. to me. Yeah, but I th- I'm just saying, like, I think Nintendo would secure like a trailer announcement or something. Yeah, that it would that it would happen and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
Because I think if Nintendo could do that, like just <clears throat> secure announcements, that that'd be good for them. Yeah. They need to, they need to make some partnership deals. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some sort of spin-off Warriors game at some point either for I don't know. I still I'm still of the mind that <clears throat> Xenoblade Chronicles would be is ripe for us a, a Warriors style game. Mm-hmm. Even though I mm-hmm. don't like the Warriors games, I think that I, Xenoblade I would is be, ripe for one. I would be surprised if EA brought a new IP, not an EA original, but a new IP strictly for Switch. Good luck with that. I know you can you can file that under in that same drawer where you have Arms Two written down on a sticky note. No, Arms Two. I think Arms Two is going to be happening. I, I uh, worst man, Arms Two. Just say. I hope not. I hope not. I heard on a podcast the other day that like, are like they were talking about Arms for some reason, but it, in like a negative light, and like they'd be really shocked if Nintendo put another Arms out, and I'm like. You know, I think I agree with you. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's so past a million. It's yeah, so but good. Nintendo can Nintendo can publish a piece of poop and it would sell a million units. Was it, but I'm wasn't? Wasn't the day one launch too? Wasn't it was, day one uh, launch? It was. Let's see. Pretty close. It was May of May. 2017, and Switch yeah. came in, came out in March, so it was there. It was their first kind of new release. Yeah, right? their if you were first Switch you, only release. Yeah, if yeah. you weren't into like Mario Kart or Le- you know Breath of the Wild for some strange reason, if you weren't into one of those two, Arms was your game, I guess. But yeah, well, no. everybody they, when the demo came out, the test trial thing came out, everybody was hyped for it, and then they was doing the like the Smash trailers, uh, showing off new characters, and everybody got yeah. hyped from that and everything, and it came out. But I'm like, there's there's arms tournaments and stuff. Like people, I don't know how people are still playing it or everything. But they were just like, what they played, they truly enjoyed because it reminded them of, you know, Punch Out with a mix of Power Stones. They like, should just they should have just made a new Punch Out game. <laughs> yeah, and they really missed not putting Little Mac in that game. Sorry, like if you're gonna have a boxing game and you don't put Little Mac in it. Give little Mac with Go Go Gadget arms, yeah, <laughs> or like the yeah. the green wireframe arms. That would have been awesome. Yeah. yeah, something different. I don't know. I I played arms. I like. I I was like, man, I can't believe I put sixty bucks on this. I really did. I I just felt like there wasn't much there. It, it's kind of like all the Mario sports games for me now. Like I don't feel like there's enough there anymore. There's not enough heart in it. Yeah. Man, Mario Golf was rough. Dude, was I was too. I was so excited for Mario Strike. Like I've been begging for a Mario Strikers game, and once I saw that it was going to mm-hmm. be like the Mario Golf, Mario Tennis route, I was like, I'm not going to even buy it. And I'm the biggest like Mario Strikers is my game. I just yeah. couldn't do it. I couldn't put it in. <clears throat> yeah, man, yeah. it's it's so weird how like on one hand Nintendo can put out these like amazing amazing games like zelda and mario and even stuff like pikmin and fire emblem and all these things and then like you get to the mario sports games and they just kind of like fart them out it's like no it's got mario in it soccer (laughs) go (laughs) yeah i don't know i mean i know people like more love for sports games we need more love for sports games I know. More I'm still waiting for Madden games. to come to Switch, but it's never going to. <laughs> Bring Can't back NFL Street be... 2. Yeah. I could see that happening. <laughs> I wish. Man. I wish EA would be cool again and make NFL Street. Man. Well, that's the NFL. They don't want they they're trying to get away from the the hoodlum persona as the commissioner would say. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll take the hoodlum persona then not being able to play a a match online. Now <laughs> that's not the biggest place. problem now. The deleting of franchises, the <laughs> and leagues. That's that's what yeah, got Madden in a huge heap of trouble this year. Uh, did they ever fix it? <clears throat> no, it was unfixable. Well, no, I mean, those they, those people they, lost it. Yeah, like they could fix the bug, but they lost all that stuff, all that stuff they've been working on. That's like yeah, 
if you're really into that community, that's a lot. That's like that's like if LeBron lost all of his Monster Hunter. You know, yeah. it, it's close on it's on that same level. You know, it'd be it'd be tragic. It's tragic. Yeah. Um, or Corey losing his Destiny characters. That would be oh that would be God, like the same. Go. That would be like I'm scared because one person <laughs> lost their. There was an update, and one person lost their character oh. and all their progress, and they fixed it. But don't yeah, I but worry that's... about that all the time, yeah. especially with like at how least... many kids are in, in and out of my house these days. Like, mm-hmm. at least Corey, scary, you put all your eggs in a basket that's held by Bungie. All these other people have their eggs in a basket held by EA. That's true. <laughs> At least know that. <laughs> At least know that. Oh, man. Uh, Dude, there's so much cool stuff, by the way, that Bungie is putting out right now with, like, mm-hmm. all the, man, all the Destiny stuff, like, all the statues and all of the shirts and the collector's edition. I really want the, I, I really want the last two collector's editions and... Mm-hmm. They're just they're just so expensive. I want the ghosts. I want all the ghosts. I looked up a Destiny One a Destiny One Ghost Edition today, by the way. It's three hundred dollars for the cheapest one, and that's the Xbox three sixty version of it. Wow. I was like I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Because that ghost, that's the only way you can get that ghost is that is through that collector's edition. That's crazy. Oh, good. I, I, I was actually gonna put this in your uh, expansion pass uh, topics that y'all can discuss on, on an episode. But if y'all could go back in time and change any way you started to play a game, like you can go back in time, start over, knowing what you know now, would you play different games to like be a part of the moment be a part of the crowd when it first started like destiny i wish i would have stuck with destiny one when it came out but it was kept breaking on me so much on the ps3 that i just was like i can't i don't i I wish i would do this oh go ahead i i probably would have not played destiny one at all uh i probably would have started just jumping in destiny 2 because knowing what i know of the first destiny I I don't think that was a good game. I kind of felt like it was boring, didn't know what the story was, and I thought to rectify all of that. Don't worry, people um, still don't know what the story of Destiny 1 was. That's fine. <laughs> uh but I, I kind of feel like now that this like knowing Destiny 2, uh I enjoyed it for what it is. Like like I said they rectified a lot of stuff and I think that's that's the one they sh- I think Destiny 1 should have been <laughs> Destiny 2 in the first place. Well, and, Destiny 1 went through incredible changes before it came out. Like so you know when you go through the the base story of Destiny 1, like you go to four separate planets. Mhm. Mm-hmm. It actually was supposed to be like so <clears throat> depending on what race you chose it was your starting planet. And then the Taken King was actually supposed to be the ending of Destiny 1's original campaign. And then they like had to like redo all the stuff. It's it's crazy. Like this the Destiny how it came out the in the yeah. as good a shape as it did is like mind-boggling. Yeah. It's incredible. I, and like I when I when I got it day one, I was all in and ready to go. But the, it was a constant crash, constant like, oh, like I didn't have internet in my house. So I would go to friends' houses to play it and it'd be like, oh, the servers are down today. I'm like, oh, well, <clears throat> all right. I guess I'm not playing this now. But it was yeah. such an attractive game, such an attractive game to me. Oh, man. It was it was so cool and yet so like terrible at the same time. <laughs> it like it really reminds me of how like Fallout 76 is now, right? Where like people play it and love it, but like it's, it's still in that phase where like it's still janky and still trying to mm-hmm. figure stuff out. And who knows if they'll ever fix it or not, but like I don't know, that's what I think. I think of Fall when I think of Fallout 76, I think of Destiny 1. The the only ironically the only game that got it right out of the gate was the division the first one and like nobody played it because it's the division 
Uh, although I really like that the Ubisoft thing. Yeah, I finished. The, I finished both of them with the division. You know, yeah. I really. I really like the division. I, if I had more time, I would be doing that. But to answer answer your question, Austin, there are actually three games I think I would play differently, no, I, especially within content creation at this point. Mm-hmm. Like Destiny is definitely one of them. I would have I would be I would have recorded everything I've ever done ever in the history of Destiny mm-hmm. and yeah. made content around it, which I'm starting to do. <coughs> Huh. For the Tower Casuals YouTube channel, like I actually erased one of my characters and am going to go through the new light experience as a quote unquote new player uh, mm. to kind of, I think, hopefully by maybe the end of the year, I will be able or maybe the summer or something like play through the old campaigns again and just like work my way through as a new solo player. And this is what to expect. And this is how you do this. And this is how you do this type thing um disney dreamlight valley is actually something i wish i would have known was going to be huge that community is humongous and i wish i would have started mm-hmm. from the beginning and like done a few videos on it or whatever because mm-hmm. man that community is blowing up like it's ridiculous how big it is mm-hmm. and then uh what was the third one there was another game I forget now though, so, but yeah, I mean those two games specifically, I would have done something different. We tried, we did try to do that with Anthem, and then Anthem sucked. Mm-hmm. You know, so we we had Poor five Anthem. episodes of an Anthem podcast out before the game came out. Mm-hmm. Like Jesse and I were doing that. Yeah, like he. That's bu- how we... uh, Logan and I started. Was playing Anthem and. Man. Man, so uh, am I the only been. one that still finished Anthem? Yeah, I finished it. Wow, I finished the campaign. I was like, this is not a terrible story, but now what? <laughs> now yeah. that I finished oh, yeah. it, I don't want to do I, any I, of this stuff. I I finished <laughs> it and deleted it because I'm just like, yeah, I did everything. I, Same. There was no need to go back. Yeah. Same. I I mean I liked the idea of Anthem. I thought the flying and the shooting were really good, but the content yeah. around it was oh, yeah. terrible. I love funny like the best character. part of the game was the, was the last part of the game even developed. Oh, uh, oh so yeah, cuz they had those like uh, those like trials, like the like the temples or whatever afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And then uh like Anthem wasn't even called Anthem until like 3 weeks before that E3 showcase either. <laughs> I'll never forget when they announced it. <laughs> the guy's like, "Yep, we're coming out with a game. It's called Anthem. It's Man. coming." Man, it's rough. That's so Can't rough. Be that. He's not even that excited. Why should I be that excited? Right. Right. Man. Man. People. <sighs> Anyways, that's fun. Oh, yeah, new story. Sorry, I'm doing this. Um, I kind of forgot. We just started talking about stuff. Uh, so, yeah, Mortal Kombat 12 is confirmed for a 2023 release date during a WB earnings call. It seems that MK12 uh, was a slip of the tongue uh, since Andrew Slavin, VP of Global Investor Strategy, said that M- MK12 and Suicide Squad were planned for the year 2023. Uh, with Sony's latest date of play, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, uh, was announced that its release date was May 26th of this year. Uh, MK12, uh, can MK12 come in the later half of this year, and will Nintendo get a version of the game? Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of figured that Mortal Kombat 12 was the next game from nether realm because of the whole wb will they won't they sell (laughs) the Mm -hmm. the studios and uh obviously i think i wish injustice 3 was their next game because i actually really really love injustice uh especially the last one because they put the ninja turtles in that was cool i didn't like the uh the ed boon like i i get what he was going for but i was like I'm kind of disappointed, man. I really wanted to just this three. I, I know. I don't care about Mortal over Kombat his, like at all. Oh, with his joke. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. 
uh, Mortal Kombat's cool and all, but I just I don't care. Like I haven't bought any. Of, I have. I mean, I bought X because that was big when it came out, but that was I haven't cared since. Well, I, I mean, I can understand why they're doing it. You know, definitely with Evo and everything. Uh, yeah. I know they already have their announced games for Evo and stuff, uh, but they probably want to get it in for next year, um, along with like Street Fighter Six and Tekken Eight and stuff like that. So uh, I don't think anybody was surprised uh, for it. I think they were just like, "Oh, MK12, okay." Yeah. I uh, which a lot of actually got a lot of stuff on got a... <laughs> I got like, eleven it... on Switch too. Yeah. yeah. How's it play? I gotta, how's it play on Switch? It play it plays great. They they sacrificed a lot of like background textures and skybox textures. Mm-hmm. Uh and the characters in handheld mode look pretty um let's say they kind of look like clay. Uh mm-hmm. but it's it runs at sixty frames a second. It runs really smooth. The fighting is great. Like it it's one of the better third party ports on Switch, to be honest with you. Um but also, if you want to play that game seriously, Switch is probably not the place to play it. But it's st- it's still a pretty decent port. I would, if you want to mess around with it, I would actually recommend this, the Switch version also because it's on sale all the time for like ten bucks. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. But I don't know if Switch will get a port of <laughs> of uh, twelve. It might. If it's running on the same engine, it might. But hmm. it's questionable. There, there was a lot of stuff announced switch. at that uh, at that WB meeting that kind of got just spread out everywhere. I don't know how big you're all into WB property, but <laughs> well, I didn't know that it got a, like they that it got like announced or it was like a slip of the tongue because I think that was right before the state of play happened, and then that's yeah, when people started talking about it. That day there was a giant WB like. Uh, like meet like owners meeting and stuff mm. like Lord of the Rings is getting like movies renewed there's gonna be a new it series Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat 12 was in was in there the suicide squad was going on at the state of play a lot of stuff I'm not excited about to be honest <laughs> a lot of stuff yeah. little... at, where's my, as I heard where's my Hogwarts Rings remake, legacy sequel <laughs> we're getting a Hogwarts legacy is getting a series on HBO didn't know yeah, if you saw, saw that. that was another thing that got announced. Yeah, I didn't um, know if that was real or not. Some... I saw that reported on Pure Xbox actually. Not like announced, but that was that's where like all this Mortal Kombat 12 news was coming from was this owners meeting. So there's a lot of stuff in the works. Like the it like <laughs> it series, it prequel series is coming. It's like I guess we know which characters lot. are coming to as DLC characters. <laughs> It, Pennywise. Pennywise will be in, in Mortal Kombat 12. Guaranteed. Yeah. Pennywise, Voldemort. Uh, yeah. Who else? Um, uh, the new Predator <laughs> from yeah, the H. Hulu movie. Um, Gandalf. <laughs> you imagine getting Gandalf getting just torn to shreds. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Someone from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Joel from The Last yeah. of Us. <laughs> Man. Bashed it, Ed Joel. <laughs> oh no! Spoilers for those who haven't played The Last of Us Part Two yet. I guess I uh, you, you'll get there eventually. If you haven't yeah, got there, you haven't got there. Dude, whatever. If you don't know, then I don't know that that you don't know how he got his head bashed in. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah, MK12. I probably not. I'm not super invested in more combat. I honestly, the only reason why I bought 11 on Switch is because we were doing Pal Block, and that was the only thing I think we were doing at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, we got to talk know. about Nintendo games. So, yeah, plus it was like always on sale, so that's why I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Here we go. We can tell Ed wrote this headline Video game scalpers are being greedy and naughty again. Ed likes the word naughty. <laughs> With the Metroid Prime Remastered Physical Edition released on Wednesday, February 22nd, it seems that scalpers have doubled or tripled the price uh, from its initial $39.99 price tag. Uh, with the game not having a limited release, they probably think the game, uh, people will flock to them to get a copy. The game was officially announced in the latest Direct, uh, with 
the game shadow dropping digitally later that day and a physical the physical plan later in the month do you think they jumped the gun on this one um yes although i did get an email from amazon saying my physical copy has been delayed till the end of march so <gasps> that's neat uh, mm. which is fine i don't care i bought it because just to have i already bought it digitally so you know mm. i like metroid prime so i would love a, a physical copy but if for whatever reason i don't get one it's not the end of the world uh i still have that gamecube disc so <laughs> i want to play with terrible controls <coughs> oh my gosh metroid prime remastered though is is awesome i love it um it's what i'm going to play after i have like a list of four games to play after i finish hogwarts legacy and metroid prime is on that list and they're all games i've started too i need to finish link's awakening i need to play metroid prime remastered i need to finish hi-fi rush and uh what was the other game there's something else but yeah uh what do you i mean what do you guys think about this physical copy um i mean people been going to the stores and finding their copies and buying it and taking pictures of it so um i don't think it's going to be something that uh anyone's going to be like you bought these copies and trying to sell them from 100 no i could just play the digital version or i can go to best buy or it still show that they still got some stock i just order from them pick up you know yeah yeah Go to the 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 smallest town that has a Walmart with video games in it. Check it out because that's your best bet. That's yeah, where I, I, mean, I never have a problem getting any physical game. They my local Walmart still has uh, the Mario Sunshine uh, three packs still just oh, behind wow. the case. You can still buy them mm-hmm. for fifty bucks or whatever. It's like they're yeah. just sitting there. You know. Yeah, so my local Walmart is your friends. Yeah, these. I mean, our target still has them. I think it's that game was not short printed at all. I think they thought that game was going to sell better than it did. Yeah, but you can't um, buy it online. I mean, everybody, is that still a thing? I mean, what Which you one? can't buy it online? I don't, you I can't don't buy it on the Nintendo Shop Store, right? Isn't that the know, thing so. where they took no. it off? Yeah. No. Yeah. The yeah, six months gone. are up, so they took it off the shop. Yeah. So the only way you can have it is if you bought it previously or you own the physical copy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. still those physical copies are just sitting <laughs> just sitting out there. And and I was the thing about it that folks were so upset about that like this shouldn't be available for at this I mean, this should be available after six months and all this I'm like, are you gonna pick a copy or not? Because once it's yeah. gone, it's gone. I'm like, yeah. if you weren't I'm like if you're not trying to save up to spend sixty dollars to get a get you a copy then why are you worry about it when they stop selling it? I'm like, yeah. when has there been a game that's been out for a si- way past six months that's not on sale that you went out and got on any yeah, platform? Sure. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I know people are in different financial situations and whatever. Yeah. Um, and, but that that game was out for like a year, so I don't know. It's, I'm I I'm of two minds of that. I also just uh, don't care because I got a copy and uh, it wasn't good. So you're not missing anything. Also, Mario 64 is available on the uh, on the whatever. It is expansion so. Sunshine will be here. Thing. Sunshine will come. I believe it'll come. I mean, it'll be a my, year. Yeah, my thing. I mean, Ed and I have had this conversation twice already. I think, but. GameCube, the GameCube generation and the Wii generation are primed for remasters at this point, mm-hmm. like HD remasters, yeah. right? I mean, we're already seeing yeah. a ton of it. Sunshine was the <laughs> Sunshine was the test bed, I think. That collection was trying yeah. to get the, the GameCube and Wii emulators working, I think. And the, uh, mm-hmm. what was the other thing? The N64 emulators working. Yeah. That was the test bed. And so I think you're going to start seeing these games come at some point. I mean, Skyward Sword HD right yeah uh, metroid prime bat and kato's we're seeing we're seeing we're seeing it so they're coming is is sunshine and prime the only two gamecube games on there on <sighs> switch because for yeah. well tales of symphonia um, technically but it's uh that's based off the ps3 version i think yeah but i think right now those are the only two and then skyward sword is the wii game 
Are there any other it's Wii a, games? The Tib Kirby and the Chaos. Kirby, I guess. Yeah, Kirby. Return to Dreamland. So, yeah. And if they do Corruption, which is Metro Pride Three, mm-hmm. that would that would be two. I games. think I think two and three are going to be packaged together as a sixty dollar product, <clears throat> or you can buy them both separate for forty. That's my mm-hmm. opinion. I think that physical is going to have two and three in it together. I think you think two a, two and three would ever come as like a add on package. You pay fifty bucks and you get both of them added on to your to hmm. your Metro Prime. Maybe no, I don't know. I think I think at that point digitally they would just sell them as a package. I think I think there would be like a trilogy download that would be like maybe eighty mm-hmm. or ninety bucks. Yeah. Uh, if you already bought Metroid Prime One, here's the two and three package that's like sixty, and then each one would be sold separately for like forty. I think. Right. Because Iron Galaxy would have to be quiet if they're. I mean, those games are done, right? Them. If they did one, they already did two and three. It's the same engine. We don't know. And it's based off the Wii version. So, I mean, it's the same engine and they're already done. But if, but I'm like, if Iron Galaxy is going in doing what they did with Metro Prime. Well, they need money because they just shut down their Rumbleverse game. So, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, And Prime and Prime 2 is probably going to take longer because you have the light world and dark world. You got two worlds in there. Yeah, that's fine. So, they're, they're a professional company. They'll figure it out and they'll get it out. Or it's already done, and Nintendo's just sitting on it, like everything else they do. So, yeah, but that's I'm, it. That I'm very excited the, uh... to play this game, though. Very what excited game? to play Metro Prime. Metroid oh yeah, Prime. it's good, it's, dude. I've never, I've never so played. Good. I've, I've never played them. I've never played Metroid Prime. Um, and I haven't bought like a new Switch game in a long time. But this one coming out at forty bucks, I was like, yeah, I might have to jump on this. I might have to jump on this. Yeah, that's so good. Um, but that's it for news. Uh, I guess we'll move on to Pack Watch. Pack Watch. What is this game? Yes. Bro- Brock the Investigator. In a futuristic light <laughs> light cyberpunk world where animals have replaced humans, privileged citizens live under a protective dome of <laughs> from the ambient air pollution while others struggle to make a living. On the outside, Brock, a private in- detective and former boxer. <laughs> what? That's so great. Uh, lives with Graf, the son of his deceased wife. Although he couldn't, he, although he could never uh, elucidate her accident. Yep. Mm, that's a word. Uh, recent events have shed some light on the event, more tr- uh, an even more tragic outcome, one that may be linked to their own existence. Uh, will they be able to withstand the threats of this corrupt world? So uh, that. I looked this game up, and I think it's like 1999. Um, they said it's a punch and click adventure. Great. <laughs> okay. So, so, so there is like you know clicking around and, and everything, doing investigations, but at times it goes into a 2D beat 'em up uh, uh, action part. So you are like an alligator. A detective alligator beating beating uh other animals up. Interesting. I'm looking at so it. That's now why on the it PlayStation says store and uh I'm, I'm a little intrigued. I, I wasn't intrigued when you said punch and click, but then when you saw the said the beat 'em up stuff, I'm I'm a little back in. I'm back in now. Back in. Back in. <laughs> Uh, Ken <laughs> Follett's The Pillar of the Earth, based on Ken Follett's world's bestseller, The Pillars of the Earth, uh, retells the story of the village of King, uh, Kingsbridge in a whole new interactive way. It plays Jack, Alina, and Philip, and change the events of the book through exploration, decision making, and dialogues. Uh, in their struggle to survive, uh, Li- uh, lives and destinies intertwine. Philip the monk becomes pr- uh, becomes prior prior of one of the small abbey of King's Bridge. Man, this is uh, English, uh, European English, and it hurts to read. At <laughs> at the same time, maybe throw some vinegar on it; it might read better. Uh, at the same time, a boy called Jack is raised in the woods by his outlawed mother. 
His apprenticeship as a stones as a stonemason paves his way to become a gifted master builder. Together with the disgraced noblewoman Alina, Jack and Philip begin the construction of one of the greatest cathedrals England will ever see. It does look beautiful. Like it's like uh painted in a sense, like uh uh interactive um painting. And so it looks really good. I don't know if it's for me or anything, but I but when you see the emotion and everything, it looks pretty good. I yeah, I look it on the PlayStation store. It came out in twenty seventeen, so this has been out for a while. I wonder uh yeah. you might be able to see some think- gameplay or some uh some reviews on it now. Yeah, I think the Switch is just now getting it. So, uh, And the last big release this week, Fitness Boxing, Fist of the North Star. <laughs> In Fitness Boxing, Fist of the North Star, Kinshiro, the protagonist of Fist of the North Star, and his rivals guide the player as instructors. Great. So that's... that's... Is it... What was that what? fist game? What was that fist game with the with the rabbit... Oh, like that, that Metroidvania-ish. Oh, Metroidvania, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that was a that was an interesting uh, <laughs> title. I don't know. I don't know anything about Fist of the North Star. That's fine. It's a great anime. Is it? Oh, mm-hmm. it's an yeah. anime. I didn't even know it's that. It's an anime. <laughs> yeah, when when uh, there's some history f- about that game, uh. I mean, about that series, because America didn't know anything about it. And I didn't know. Um, there's a game called Black Belt that was on Sega Master System. It got reskinned from Fist of the North Star in Japan. So if you go, mm-hmm. if you put Fist of the North Star for Sega Master System, you'll see that version. And then if you put Black Belt, you'll see the same version, but it's reskinned with different characters and everything. Uh-huh. Um, and I I seen Fist of the North Star because it's an anime movie, uh, that got that people just started sneaking in to America, like on public access and stuff. So um, that's how I learned about Fist of the North Star. Cool. cool. Hmm. All right, it's time for Game Fact Advance. Uh, we heard of the term vaporware, right? Well. It seems Nintendo has some vaporware from past consoles. At E3 2009, Nintendo president Satoru Iwata announced that Wii Vitality Sensor... The clippy thing. Uh, It was a device for the Wii that would be used to relax the player and tell them uh, their heartbeat. At the time, there wasn't any information other than uh, its announcement or games planned for the accessory. Sadly, on July 5th, 2013, it was canceled due to it uh, uh, not, not properly, properly tested. being tested. It in today's That's era it. of gaming, uh, where streaming and mental health have become more visible, the Vitality Sensor would come uh, become something Nintendo revisits in the future. Um, I'm actually shocked they don't do this for like their fitness games and stuff. Yeah, like, I'm shocked that it never they never did something with that. But I can see that for like Ring Fit or something. Imagine if you have that on for like a game like Outlast. If you get scared, your heart starts beeping fun- faster, starts vibrating on you, then makes you move, and then you get caught. That'd be scary. Pass. Up, up, the, up the scariness a little bit. <laughs> yeah, pass, 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 pass. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ed, back to you. Well, everybody, it's time for question and block. And we have three questions for you guys. Uh, you missed Grace the two from the Discord. There's oh, that yeah, came. From, I Discord. was looking for Discord and nothing came up. I asked. Yes, I asked them. I asked for questions yesterday, and Josh Martinez asked too. I'm going to paste them in here. Okay. And then you then you asked for more questions yeah. today. So okay. Uh, Dang, I wonder if I missed. Oh, they were posted. They're right above where you asked questions. <clears throat> um, okay. Oh, here I just pasted no. them. We'll answer them. I asked. Anyways, continue. Okay. Sorry. So our first question comes from Grayson Morales. Did you guys think Nintendo would shadow drop Metroid Prime two and three, mm-hmm. or 
Will they be normal announcements with a set launch date for the same day physical slash dis- digital? So what they did on uh, for the latest uh, Nintendo Direct, like they was like the game is out now digitally, and then two weeks after would be the physical version. I think they're going to do exactly what they did with this because it 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 gets yeah. people excited. I think it's an easy enough series to shadow drop and physical later, right? Like I, it, they, it clearly worked with Metroid Prime One, and I think it'll work better with Two and Three because uh, I know those games aren't as well regarded, but I think mm-hmm. everybody's excited for Nintendo Direct, and when they see announcements like that, I think that'll boost. I think that'll just boost people's excitement for it, even if they're lesser games. And so, yeah, I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to do it exactly that. And I think they're going to shadow drop them both at the same time. So I don't think they are. Oh my gosh. Um, and Worst. The, reason, the reason why is because I think Metro Prime 4 is their focus now. I don't. So I'm not, I'm not saying I that I, I'm not saying that the next Metroid game that comes out will be a remaster of two and three, but I think their focus now is like, okay, we got the remaster of one out. Now we got to get our big game that we promised, which is Metroid Prime Four. So I think four will come out, and then they could always go back and do two and three. Because to them, two and three. Yeah, is just but like I think fillers. people, I think people who've never played Metroid Prime want to play the series in order, and that's going to prevent yeah. them from doing that. And I think Nintendo yeah. knows that. And I think I think those ports will be easy enough for them to get out and allow Retro to do more with Metroid Prime 4 at this point. But I think Nintendo is not worried about that. They'd be like, hey, we well, put this out be. when the, we put these games out when it was on the Wii. You should have got a Wii and played them. That's Nintendo's I, I mentality. I think that's a terrible reasoning. And yeah, you could have made terrible. that same reasoning for Metroid Prime 1. So, I mean, that's, that's but just... That's true very true but hey, I'm I, just... I, i'll say this from someone okay. who's never played any of them if i play one and then they drop four and there's still a possibility that two and three is coming out i'm not buying four until two and three come out mm-hmm. i gotta play them all in order now that's, yeah. that's it's like it's like gears of war when gears of war released the ultimate edition one i mm-hmm. played it i was waiting for two and three to come out and they dropped four they dropped five and i didn't play four and five because i had I was like, I was waiting for those two and three remasters, which never yeah. came, and so which and I don't it think sounds like those know. those are coming this year. Now they're going to really hopefully, hopefully they're coming. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I would love to continue. Like a, I think they're going to do like a Master Chief Collection style drop for them, where mm-hmm. they're all going to be in one package. Uh, not, f- I don't think five will be, but I think I think what they decided was, well, the rumor at least is one, two, three judgment and four and then have uh the campaign levels from one two three and four uh or the not the campaign the multiplayer levels from one two three and four Um, so i would love that gears of war might be my favorite first party game of any of all of them i love gears of war i love gears i just love the idea of it Gears Gears of War is good for Microsoft. I, I, I do not like it on 360 though because of that controller. They're great on Xbox One. I enjoy them on Xbox One and I love Gears Five, but playing them on 360, I'm like, oh, I, I would yeah. just throw the controller away. Oh man, Gears Gears of War was the reason why I got an Xbox 360. That first one. <laughs> I, that was the yeah. first game I played on Xbox when I finally bought one was. Uh, it was Sunset Overdrive and then Gears of War Ultimate Edition. And I loved it. Yeah, it was loved it. for me getting the Xbox One because I didn't really get a 360 because I just thought it was a <clears throat> complicated system. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, when Rise of the Tomb Raider was exclusive, so you bought on Xbox so. One. <laughs> PlayStation yeah, Three, not actually, complicated. <laughs> yeah, I got a PlayStation really, Three. I, I, I still stand by the PlayStation is not complicated. I don't understand how anyone thinks it's complicated. It's too. It's just a bar. It just goes back and forth. Xbox has got boxes everywhere. I don't get it. I, but I really don't. I think between 360 and PS3, 360 was more like a computer to developers. So they, that was why it was easier to manufacture. And then PlayStation 3 had the uh, cell chip, and people didn't know how to work on that system processing. And stuff. So that's why it took them a while to learn and everything. Mm-hmm. But I, I, 
I was just like, I'd rather get a during that area for 360 between 360 and PlayStation 3. Uh, I was like, I'd rather get a PlayStation 3 than uh, a 360 because outside of the Blu ray player that was in it, um, but you could have gotten an HD DVD add on, (laughs) which I did. And how long? (laughs) And how long did that last? <laughs> it lasted a whole year. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Harry Potter and King Kong looked great on my HD DVD player. <laughs> Click was awesome on the PSP. You watch Click and you watch Adam Sandler's Click. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, Metroid 2 and 3 wouldn't drop, but I think their focus now is Prime. Uh, Prime Four, and I think two and three could always drop a little bit later after. Mm-hmm. So, well, well, uh, the next question comes from Dan. He asks, "What two D Zelda game deserves the Link's Awakening remake <clears throat> treatment?" Zelda Two. Zelda Two. <laughs> that game needs it, to be re re. That's the, yeah, but I think I mean Link's Awakening, like. As complicated as obtuse and complicated as Link's Awakening is, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think I think it benefited from the, the just being a modern game in general. Mm-hmm. And I think if you remade Zelda two, it would benefit from the modern kind of uh, capacity for modern games, and you could adjust the difficulty settings and do all these things that would actually allow players to play that in a way that wouldn't make you want to bang your head on the desk and, you know, hope you pass out from hitting your temple. Right. Like it just, Mm. I think, I think the game that deserves the most would be Zelda two. Although I would also take an original, uh, the original game as well. I'm going to say spirit tracks, uh, for legend of Zelda, because it's a game that (laughs) had, I think it really needs it, and like not a lot of people play. And I would love to see just Zelda and Link in that train, in that graphics, in that graphical mm-hmm. style, and everything. Because I think not only would it be cute and funny, I think more people will be willing to play that game with actual controls instead of touchscreen, and everything. And this is outside of Fence of Marvel Blast, but I think Spirit Tracks just. I mean, I understand it had that Wind Waker look and what they were going for, but I think mm-hmm. the remake for that game would get more people to try it out um, because Spirit Track is not Spirit Tracks is not really talked about when it comes to the Legend of Zelda games. Yeah, I so. think. I mean, I think the DS and the 3DS games were just hindered. I mean, I guess the Link Between Worlds. Uh, I guess more just the 2DS or the <laughs> the original DS. Well, Zelda games yeah. are hindered by the mm-hmm. touchscreen controls and them trying to have this system defining Zelda experience that didn't really pan out. And yeah, yeah I think Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks would benefit from being on a quote unquote normal console, kind of like how I said Federation Force, Metroid Prime Federation Force would also benefit mm-hmm. from being on a console that's not the 3DS. Oh, heck yeah. Um, mm. But. I don't. I, I, that would, I would probably be the one that would get a remake and drop. Let me Federation Force. Let me tell you though. <laughs> let me tell you this. I would take. <clears throat> I would take every Zelda game ever made in the Link's Awakening kind of style. Uh, the original game Zelda Two, A Link to the Past. Oh, yeah. I would. Yeah. I would take A Link Between Worlds also, just as like a. I don't understand why See? that game hasn't been ported yet. That's how good that game is. See, Go, Link, that Link that's my worlds, argument. I, yeah. Like Link Between Worlds uh, is I think is too good already that you just need to port that. Whereas yeah. <laughs> for me, Phantom Hourglass is ugly. <laughs> it's it needs it needs a touch of paint. It's it's <laughs> ugly to look at now. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of those it, older DS games kinda are though. Yeah, it needs I, that I, Wind Waker touch up for sure. Yeah. And that's why I say like Link Link to the Past needs that remake of Link Between Worlds. In that link between world style, because I I feel like they both will fit each other, mm-hmm. and I and I like how it looked on the 3ds, uh, for link between worlds. It's the, link between worlds, man. I yeah. that's my second favorite Zelda. I love that game. Two deaths. If that's, I don't, I I if they do that for link between a uh, link to the past, please for the love of it, that level where if you're at the boss and you gotta hit him 
and everything, and you bounce, you're bouncing off, and you fall down and got to keep going back up. Please erase that. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> that that dungeon was terrible. I hate not not saying that I hated that the dungeon, but it's my least dungeon to play. Like I would take any water temple at any time over that dungeon. By the way, are y'all playing Minish Cap at all? I haven't jumped in. I finished it. I just I haven't, finished it. I haven't played this week. I played it when yeah. it came out, but I haven't played it. So I it. gave myself I four Yoshi coins. I can't wait. Of course I want to. I'm trying to make myself finish Hogwarts Legacy, and then I'm going to play all the six of those Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, I, I have I to finish Hogwarts Legacy for Book Club first before Good I do more. anything else, except for Destiny. But Except maybe WarioWare. I don't care enough. Yeah. Except for WarioWare. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Wow. Listen, WarioWare is uh, fun, but I, I don't I don't plan on playing through that game. <laughs> WarioWare is got, its own I, thing. I gotta play it on the GBA in a song. I never played WarioWare. Like the first one and stuff. So that was the game like yeah. all my cousins, we all had a Game Boy Advance, the SPs, and like we'd all get different games and trade them around. And the cousin mm-hmm. that got the warrior war game was like hey you want to trade and everyone's like no no we don't want to trade <laughs> we don't want we don't want to play warrior oh. war like can i have super circuit no i don't want to i'm playing super circuit you can go play warrior war <laughs> you can be on wow. your own wow well uh mountain drew b from twitter asks which is better ocarina of time or metroid prime <laughs> oh god. Well, I I have Ocarina of Time, but it's because I haven't played Metroid Prime. But Ocarina of Time is not one of my favorite Zeldas either, so it's very Man. possible Metroid Prime would beat that. Man, I I don't know. Corey? I I I like Metroid Prime a lot and I actually think Metroid Prime Remastered is like the pinnacle of remastering a, a game before you start considering it a remake, right? I actually would probably consider metroid mm-hmm. prime more a remastered more of a remake uh but judging on the original version of metroid prime and ocarina of time <laughs> say ocarina of time is better um but if 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 i was allowed to grade the remaster of metroid prime it would be close uh but yeah. i i have to say ocarina of time is is better just based on those original releases and like what they did in terms of gaming history like ocarina of time is is so important to not only just games but the evolution of zelda in general mm-hmm. i think um mm. so that's my opinion so i'm going to go with metroid prime for this one um i think it's better than ocarina of time because i even though i played both games at the time, time of their release um Metroid Prime felt good when I was playing it with the GameCube controller and it looked beautiful. Um, Ocarina of Time, as much as I loved it, it made me go get a guidebook. I hate Majora's Mask. (laughs) (laughs) I know he does. That's why I said it. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Uh, With Ocarina of Time, I had to go get a guide because trying to get through that... Is it not the is it not the Garrido? Uh, where I had to go <coughs> get uh, stealth my way out, mm-hmm. so that I wouldn't get caught in the jail by those ladies. I was just like, uh, mm-hmm. I need to not do this. I'm so sick of this part. Uh, well, I bought a strategy guide for Ocarina of Time because I didn't know you could go back in time because I'm was dumb. So yeah, I, that that game made me spend Christmas money, but I love Ocarina of Time for what it did. I think Breath of the Wild, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess just outshines Ocarina of Time. Like, it mm. took that formula oh, yeah. and refined it and everything. It, it still made it their own way. But, like, if I'm putting those two up against each other, I'm going with Metroid Prime. Yes, I know there's a lot of backtracking. There's a lot of reading and stuff like there, like, for the lore and everything. And I know some people don't like kind of like the end part. But I kind of I I really felt like how would a game of this nature work in 3D? And then just the way that I I, I keep saying I played that demo of Sam Goody and it made me put 
and it made me go reserve that game and pay the full thing off. So all I got to do is pick it up. Yeah. So, f- like for me, it, that's why Met- it's Metroid Prime for me. Interesting. So, I was kind of shocked. I really thought Ocarina of Time would be a. I'm not sure. Ed has Metroid. to disagree with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's okay. So it's just not Majora's Mask. It's, that's all it is. Ocarina of Time will never be as good as Majora's Mask. Majora's that's Mask will always be a side quest. Majora's <laughs> Mask will always be a side quest sequel to me. That's oh, all. Worst. Move on before I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Martinez asks, if there ever were a Smash Brothers movie, who would be the main team, similar to the Avengers? Who would you need? Uh, you would need someone to fill a spot for Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Thor, and Hulk. Well, Okay, so Samus, I feel like, would be Iron Man, right? 100%. Mario would be Captain America. Yeah. Link would be Thor. Those would be your big three, right? And -hmm, then your kind of side characters would be like Donkey Kong would be Hulk. Uh, Which would... Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right on that one. Or, hear me out, hear me out. I think you'll like this, Corey. King DDD as Thor. We gotta have the hammer, bro. Yeah, you know, I would like that, but King DDD is also a villain. <laughs> kind, But yeah. Thor's kind of a villain, in a way. In a way. Uh... I don't know, I'm making up stuff. I'm making up stuff right now. <laughs> I think Princess... I think Princess Zelda would be my Hawkeye. Because of the arrows. Of the light oh, arrows. I was gonna say Pit would be Hawkeye. But... Yeah. Um... And let's see, who would be Black Widow? You could almost do Zero Suit Samus as as Black Widow and mm. uh man. Then who would your Iron Man be? Um You do you could do Solid Snake. <laughs> you throw yeah. in him just for no reason. Yeah. Um I mean, you gotta get Fox McCloud in there. He would be your he Fox would be your your uh, uh, um, Nick Fury. Uh, I was gonna oh, say Olimar would be my Iron Man. Oh my gosh, you're the worst. Hi. Wait, who? Why? Why? Olimar from uh, Pikmin. From, from Pikmin? Pikmin? <laughs> space outfit. Yeah. Nah. So does Samus. It's literally Olimar the entire game. Right. Space. Right, yeah. but then you just like if we got Black Widow as uh. Zero suit Samus. You can't have two Samuses. I didn't. On the team. Sa- I said you could, but I already, I already committed to Samus being the Iron Man. So, then who will be your Black Widow? I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Black Widow would be because Sheik is not is she good? <gasps> Sheik, yeah, she could be a good Black Widow. She could yeah. be a good Black Widow. Yeah. Would Rob be uh, Jarvis? Yeah. 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 Great. Look at us. Look at us. Um, and then you could almost go like the Guardians of the Galaxy route, I guess, uh, later on and be like. You, you could make Mega Man Iron Man and then have Zero Suit Samus as your Black Widow. Mm, you could, I guess. That would probably make more sense, actually. If you like want to find idea. a way to get her as a uh, Black Widow, yeah. Um, well, who would be on the secondary adventure <clears throat> Smash Bros. scene? Who would be Nick Fury? Uh, well, I already said I already said Fox mm-hmm. would be Nick Fury, or you could just Tommy. use the Star Fox team as the Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> spinoff team. You could make Tom probably look. be the better idea. Make Tom Nook uh, Nick Fury. Oh my he god, is. Tom Nook is Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> or Tom Nook is Thanos, I guess, too. Uh, yeah, he he has everyone's under his thumb. But except for uh, in, except for uh, disappearing everybody, he just uh, <laughs> makes you homeless. You can't live with right <laughs> property. Just takes all guess what? Money. You're you still exist, you just don't have anything. You're homeless, yeah. you have no money. You're, you're so poor that you wish you were disappeared. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have just clap like this every time. 
my gosh. I'm going to make you broke. Clack, 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 clack. Yeah, pretty much. And then oh, you can have like a, uh, you can have your, uh, your Guardians of the Galaxy spinoff, and it'll be like Pac Man, and uh, just like yeah. the random it'll, characters that make no sense. It'll be all the third Wario. party characters, Sonic, Sonic, Pac Man, yeah. Sonic. Uh, That's a whole bunch of mascot stuff. Uh, yeah, I kind of be funny, man. Let's see, is Kidman? <clears throat> well, hold on. Who would, would Bayonetta could, actually? Could you, could actually, you like Bayonetta I'm going to go back to Thor for a second. Who do we pick as Thor? Yeah, who's Thor? Who do we say Thor was? Uh, you said, said Donkey Link. Kong. No, oh, Donkey Kong's Hulk. Who's Thor? You said Link. Link uh, at first. I did. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Well then, man, how are we gonna fit? How are we gonna fit the? Uh... I thought about like the Fire Emblem what? characters could be like Thor's Merry Men or whatever you call them. What are they called? I forget what they're called. Oh yeah, I, don't, I thought I don't you know. would say the Ice Climbers for like Thor. Oh God, no. the Ice oh, Climbers the could be uh, Quicksilver and oh, Scarlet Witch yeah. before they got their before they got their powers, yeah. and then when they turn into their powers, they turn into Bayonetta and Sonic. Oh God, and somehow. So Bayonetta, could, Bayonetta could be Black Widow, and then Zelda could be Scarlet Witch. True. Oh man, that's true. Look at us. Oh. That's true. Yeah, look at I us. I think you can make uh, the you can just give like the Fire Emblem characters their own movie. Yeah, <laughs> be like the Eternals movie. They're like the Fire Emblem characters are like the Fantastic Four movies from Fox. They like just don't count, but they have their own movie anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, we engage. Just don't count it. <laughs> Man, talk about a game I fell off of hard. It was Fire Emblem Engage. I don't know, man. man. I, about... I still haven't played Three Houses still, though. It's... Oh, man. Three three Houses I, is definitely better than Engage. I liked Engage a lot, yeah. and I just fell off hard. <clears throat> Disney Dream Life just Valley so Fault, much. though, to be fair. Just so much has dropped. Uh, I, just, I need to return to Engage, too. But like I said, just so much has Oh, my dropped. gosh. Now I'm thinking about it. What if okay for the for the Guardians of the Galaxy spinoff, Cloud is Star Lord. You could have Piranha Plant as Groot. You'd have Pac Man as a uh, as Rocket. You could have Wario as Drax, and just make Wario like really way more serious or something. I forgot about Wario. Uh, there's so much. There's so many opportunities you could have. Yeah. But Drex, I would pro- Drex, I would probably put us. That's who. Uh, um, what's his name from Metal Gear would be? Snake would be Snake? Drex. Yeah. Snake, Snake. You can put. <laughs> um. So who did you say was for Star Lord? Uh, Cloud. You could have Cloud. I, I think it'd be funny just to I, have him serious with a bunch of a lot of weird, like crazy characters by him. Because I was thinking of Terry Bogart <laughs> for it because of the hair. Mm. Mm. Well, in that case, you might as well just have the Castlevania characters there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. You could have a uh, Castlevania versus Fire Emblem spinoff. You just got oh, like, man. oh shoot. Fire Emblem would destroy them. <laughs> I don't know, hmm. man. They're vampires. Or if you add the Final Fantasy characters in there, hmm. uh, I don't know how I can get my 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 boy Joker in. That would be a. It's another way to get him in. Who? Is, okay. Uh, where does Duck Hunt dog talk- fit into all this? That's a good point too. We talked about the Avengers though. Who would be like the first bad guy they face? Like would. Like, is like Ridley a good first bad guy for them to fight, or is that farther yeah. on? Ridley. Um, like Ganondorf would be, of course, a big one. You could have Meta Knight as like a, a random bad guy they have to fight halfway yeah, through. Like movie. Ganondorf would be Ganon, Ganondorf would be like a adventure kind of thing. I feel like I, he would Ganondorf, be the first. I feel like Ganondorf would be like the first villain, and then like Loki. Yeah, and then you gotta get like you gotta get Bowser in there, right? Like that's the yeah, that's yeah. the big thing too. Is like you gotta get Bowser in there, 
You gotta get. Would Mewtwo somebody. be like the final? Would Mewtwo be the final? Um, I don't know. I don't know the hierarchy there. I'm trying to think of how all this played out because I don't really remember at this point. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, because Ganon- Ganondorf, like, <laughs> weren't they kind of like pirates and stuff in the first one? Uh, and this that Star Lord was fighting against. Um, what? Well, well, Avengers. It was Loki. Loki was the first one when they got together. Oh, I'm, oh, I was thinking of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, Guardians. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they fought Ronan the Destroyer, right? In the yeah. first Guardians. So, a a weird one that would fit randomly would be like the We Fit Trainer. Like that's the person they've been fighting this whole time was the We Fit Trainer. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <coughs> That'd be something like in yeah. Daredevil. <laughs> uh, good times. Yeah. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for Nintendo Pop Block. Austin, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell them where people can find you? And can you just give a little talk about Scramble Rambles, your podcast? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can find me at Placed Austin on Twitter. And that's pretty much it. Um, Scramble Rambo is just is just a podcast that me and my friends do. I I was having a lot of more guests on at a time, and it's just life just got busy, and so now it's like a Friday night thing. If my friends can get together, we just talk about all kinds of random stuff and just have. I mean, it's it's for my lifelong friends. One since kindergarten, one since like middle school, and the other one since middle school, pretty much. And so we've just. We've all hung out. We've all got all kinds of jokes. There's a lot of laughing involved. I mean, there, there are fits of like three minutes of us just laughing. So if you just like funny stuff, that's all we're really trying to do, then check us out. Um, we talk about games, movies, uh, all kinds of things, things we probably shouldn't be talking about because we have no knowledge whatsoever on the topic, <laughs> but we're going to say what we think anyway. <laughs> so, that's fine. You know, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. So. Don't come for and deep. We're... Don't come from deep conversation. Um, <laughs> but there are some interview stuff you can find on there. Like Ed's been on the show before. Me and Ed have had some crazy conversations on the show. So uh, mm-hmm. there's all kinds of stuff in the back catalog. And really, I mean, the whole idea of the show is just scramble rambles. Is basically just my mom. I've never been a uh, a focus on one topic in my life. I've always been interested in many things, and so I was just like talking to different people about different stuff, and that's where that came from. So. Definitely check it out, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all again soon on whatever and show. Where can they, fi- where, where can they find Scramble Rambles at? Oh, on Spotify. Just look up Scramble Rambles on Spotify. I still can't figure out how to get it on other stuff, but that'll eventually come. But if you have Spotify, definitely check it out. If you don't have Spotify, it's free. So give me some ad play. <laughs> are you uh, are you hosting it through Anchor? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. We did. Man, I did that thing where you could play music with it as well. So there's like music that plays after the, during, during and after. So that's kind of cool. But because of that, we haven't been able to put on anything else. And I'm just lazy. Like you know, like they're like, oh, you got to have this certain size picture for Apple Music. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. That's fair. I still <laughs> that. It's a joke now, but like the show was like Scramble Rambles with Austin Campbell because I didn't know if my friends would actually stick with it. And now that they do, they make fun of me for putting my name on the podcast. I'm like, well, too bad. I'm too lazy to change it. So <laughs> it's just going to stay there. It's just going to stay there now. It's not me being conceited. It's just me being lazy. That's fair. So, But yeah, definitely check it out. Well, hopefully I can get more people on. Ed, Corey, you can come on as well sometime I figure yeah. stuff out yeah. will do yes well everybody that has been it for Nintendo Power Block have a great week have a great weekend and we'll see you next time bye everybody Woo-hoo! bye yeah. Nintendo Power Block is a product of Boss Rush Media LLC and is recorded from our headquarters in Akron Ohio the show is hosted by me Edward Varnell my co-hosts are
Corey Derrick and Cordy Yikes. You can find Corey at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting the Boss Rush Podcast and Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. You can find Cordy at Cordy underscore Yikes on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. You can find me at that Richard Cole on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Nintendo Power Block on all social media platforms at Power Block Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network, Discord, and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Visit BossRush.net for more great content and Patreon.com slash BossRushMedia to learn how you can support this show. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.